Mother, man. This is Mick coming down from Down Under. You listen to me on Murder Metal Mayhem. Spreading faster than a case of the clap in a trailer court. Able to shatter eardrums within a 666 mile radius. A podcast more brutal than all the rest. It's Murder Metal All right, hey, here we are. What the fuck's up, yo? Fucking tearing it up here on a Tuesday night, throwing down a new Murder Metal Mayhem. We're at Horns High Studios for the Horns High Podcast Network, episode 172, gentlemen. Yes, and that sir. was nice of Nick, or Mick, I'm sorry, to uh, give us a little intro there from Down uh, yeah. Under. Yeah, if so. you can't tell, that's where we're going today. That's right, that's right. Now, I got Chris and Joey here with me. Everybody doing good? Oh, yeah, doing good, Spring man. is finally here, I think. Dude, kinda. I think it's fake. It's going to snow again. You think so? <laughs> I hope not, man. It's in the 50s. I'm it's nice. It. Sun has been out. Yeah, fuck been that nice. snow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm over it, dude. Yeah, fuck definitely that, over that shit. So it's I nice. I just know how it is. For the time being, uh, spring is in the air, so that's good. Uh, what shirts we got on there, Chris? Looks like, like you got a fucking, nice Disney shirt. You know, old school shit, dude. Dick Delicious and the Tasty Test. Nice. Dick yeah. D. Fuck fucking yeah, man. Sa- says uh, Satan's favorite metal band is Dick Delicious and the Tasty Tickles- Testicles. And I love the back. Fucking says, uh, I was voted most likely to have sex with a goat while worshiping Satan on heroin. <laughs> fucking love it. <laughs> yeah, those guys were awesome. It was cool. I brought them to the Mill Street Tap. Yeah, we dude. did a show with them in Low 12 and... Those guys are from Georgia, and uh, yeah, they were they Dick were a lot delicious, of fun. man. <laughs> Definitely cool guys, kind of like a mentors, you know, type of band. You know, just yeah. funny shit. Uh, Joey, what about you, man? I got the Gape shirt on. Fuck yeah! Of course, I wore this not too many episodes ago, but, but that's I mean, okay. we're going to fucking. All Tasmania, dude. How often do we go to Tasmania? Yeah. This is the first time, and not to mention like. Where Gape is from is Hobart, Tasmania, which is where fucking Martin Bryant's from. Right, right. Yeah, Yeah, that's really cool. So that's awesome. And uh, I've got a brand new shirt I just got here, I think, last week. Dissection. uh, Brutal shit with the fucking inverted cross on the back with 666. So nice shirt to wear over to the IGA here in this little (laughs) town I live in. Freaking people the fuck out. They've seen me wear some crazy shit. Uh, now, last week, guys, we did a good one, yeah. a very dark story. The Barari deaths over there in uh, Delhi, India. Uh, crazy ritual story, suicide, man. suicide, man. Really crazy story, Chris. 11 people from one family, all dead, hanging from the ceiling, really fucked up. Um, and we got into all those details, so it was a very interesting discussion about blindly following a mentally disturbed man, kind of like a cult, uh, in a way. Um, very cultish in my So, eyes. yeah, very yeah. cultish. Lots of references, of course, to Jim Jones and some of these other ones, David Koresh. Uh, but I had the horns, and I did the Danish thrash metal band Killing, Killing. Uh, which was uh, cool. And I had a little piece of that interview I did with their drummer, Jesper oh, yeah. Skousen, and so that was fun. Jesper's an awesome dude. And then um, the full interview draft. The full interview's been killing it, man. Um, but that episode, we had a mayhem story from me, the usual craziness. We just passed a 1,000 listens Fucking to hey, that man. in the first week, which we haven't done that in a while. So that's really cool. So thank you, those that have already heard it. And if you missed it, go check it out. Um, Now, we also, as you just said, Joey, we released a bonus episode with the full interview with Jesper. It's like 50 minutes. Um, Very cool. It was passing 600 listens when I checked it today. So that's really cool. Um, Plus the video of the interview I did with him. Three, three, uh, three, three, three for men. That's right. (laughs) A three-peat there. uh, Outperforming all the other interviews we've ever posted on our YouTube channel. So that's really cool. So thanks to all our new listeners, to some Danish listeners coming and checking it out. I saw Denmark hit the top 10 countries listening. Sweden, 
So we're getting some of those Scandinavian metal freaks to come over our way. Yeah. So come to our side. Yes. So and thank the country you. that's always in there usually is fucking Australia. Australia, Australia always. always. So and that's the UK. cool that we're gonna return there again today. That's right. It's like going over there for with our fucking stories. I know. It's it's just such a cool place. We've done a few of them. We got more coming up. David Bernie will be another one we'll do next probably. Now tonight we've got one, as you said. Tasmania, Australia, uh, the worst mass murder in their history at the Port Arthur, uh, like a, a tourist attraction. Tourist attraction yeah. Referred uh, to Tasmanian as the Port Arthur Massacre. Really spin like tornadoes. What's that? Do Tasmanian devils really spin like tornadoes? I don't know. That's a good question. We need to ask Rick Ring there. Yeah, <laughs> and speaking of that, fucking, is the press just fucking dropping the ball on not calling him the Tasmanian devil? <laughs> right. That's that true. The that best that would have been a good yeah. one, yeah, because his hair is just fucking whack, yeah, you know? they missed Looks out like he's they been totally in a tornado, out, Chris. You know, <laughs> right. Yeah. Crazy. So we're going to talk to our listener, Mick. Uh, that's an, a, a pseudonym for him, a fake name. Because he is a former Australian federal police investigator who contacted us, wanted to come on the show. He's a listener. And Joey, he is a 666 Club club. member. How cool is that? Yeah. So that was awesome for him to support and also to want to come on. And so uh, we're going to have a piece of that interview of him talking about Martin Bryant. So that'll be really cool. So it's going to be a good one tonight. Now, Chris, you got the horns tonight. You're going to be doing a band I don't know anything about. Fucking Ailstorm. I mean, I don't didn't really know a lot, a whole lot about him until I started checking into him. But I just like listening to him. So yeah, that's cool. Ailstorm when you fucking... first said it, it sounded like you said Hailstorm. <laughs> it's like, wait a second, you're doing who? Uh, yeah, I always fucking Ailstorm, man. I They're can't believe Ailstorm. you pick your one sober month in thirty <laughs> right? to do Ailstorm. <laughs> that's a good one, Joey. I was wondering the same thing. Like, man. Chris is still drinking water. You're not pulling a Jim Leahy and drinking vodka. Nope. No. Nope. Wow. Good it's for water, you, man. Chris. Fuck yeah. Um, so yeah, always fun to learn about a band I don't know anything about. And I got a lost classic to share tonight, and uh, we'll do that all in our metal segment. Now I got to speak with Laura Kovacs. That's of course CK's wife uh, for the upcoming tribute to CK episode. Uh, that we're doing the last week of March, because that's CK's birthday, is the 31st. So it's actually going to come out on his birthday, which is pretty awesome. That's badass. Uh, So it's going to be a special one. Uh, We're going to put most of that interview I did with her in there. We're going to talk, we talked about, you know, how much the podcast meant to CK, how we prepared for the episodes, the monstrous music collection. Oh my God, dude. How many people it took and how many truckloads to get it out of there. It was unbelievable. Uh, we talked about all of it, how I tripped and fell into the yeah. albums. We went into that. So it was a lot of fun, but also, you know, it was heartfelt. And I think you guys will really like it. Our 666 Club members have already heard it, and I heard from Rebecca, and she was really blown away by it. I yeah, uh, really, badass. really thought it was cool, and was cool to hear that side of it. Right, you know, so that so that's awesome. All right, we got a killer cage match tonight. Um, we have our listeners provide random numbers on our Facebook page because we come up with a list of killers and objects, and that's how we figure out Put who's them in fighting. The pit. So, Chris, who's uh, who do we want to thank tonight? Tonight we got uh, the one and only Gummo Wall Bacon. How's Hell it yeah. going? Trash Dick. Trash, Trash dick. dick. We got uh, Ray McFalls. How's it going, Ray? Hell yeah. And we got Nicole Graves Anderson. Those, thank you, Nicole. Fucking awesome. thank all y'all, dude. Appreciate you. Yeah, I saw Rebecca came in after the three, so <laughs> <an> honorable mention <laughs> right? to Rebecca. <laughs> Uh, but we got a good one tonight in the cage, fighting to the death. Joey, this is a very strange matchup tonight. <laughs> this, this is a uh, fucking uh, greatest hits, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, All star game, if you will, the right? serial killer match. There you go. Um, and as a matter of fact, we've got them facing off in our fucking studio right That's now. That's right, dude. We got fucking uh, Ed Gein. From fucking Plainfield, Wisconsin, and he's going to be going up against motherfucking Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy, yeah. Hell yeah, that necrophilic lawyer, man. Fucking right, dude. I'll have to 
whenever we fucking take a break, I'll fucking take a picture with both the fucking masks. Hell yeah. Face off. Face off. Yeah, that's a good idea, dude. That's a good idea. So they're going to have a couple of objects to fight with and a variable to add to the intensity. So it should be a good one tonight. And we'll do that in mayhem like always. So you guys stick around for that. All right, we have a new sponsor this month. We've talked about her before, but our our friend and diehard listener, listener Rebecca Boomsock, uh, she used to do asphalt uh, track racing, and her dad was the crew chief for NASCAR legend Dick, Dick Trickle, Trickle, which is fucking Hell cool. Hell yeah. Best name ever. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, and she's worked with several of the local drivers in and around Wisconsin, so that's really cool. So thank you, Rebecca, for sponsoring us. And if you check the episode description, there's a link to the Dick Trickle Memorial uh, Foundation that does events for, you know, memory of of Dick Trickle. So that's really cool. And so that's uh, in the episode description. Thank you to all of you motherfuckers that listen to Murder Metal Mayhem. We keep seeing the numbers rolling in this week. Uh, guys, we almost hit 3,000 3, again, yeah. 2,970 total listens. So thanks to all you guys that are doing that. We appreciate it. Well, Chris, Joey, we got a lot on our plate tonight. Going to be taking a trip down under a yes, long we plane are. ride. We were just in fucking India last week, so... We're going to be tired, jet lag, jet lag. going to Tasmania. <laughs> this is a fucking Murder Metal Mayhem world tour. That's right. And hopefully, guys, we avoid some gunfire and can put a few shrimps on the Barbie yes. in the meantime. Let's get our mass murder on. Mate. Okay. Mate. <laughs> God damn. Fucking oh, badass that shit. That shit peel your fucking face off. Some flayed I mean, disciple. Peel your face off. Flayed. Flayed. Makes exactly. Sense. I am Leviathan was the song. I Fuck mean, yeah. holy shit. I got this email from this company, Imperative PR. I'm going to talk about him in metal. But they sent me this promo of this EP coming out, and I was like, holy fuck. I mean, that's the first song on the on the EP, and it's just slamming. A uh, killer, killer death thrash band from the UK that brings it. So Hells, we're going to be yeah. doing a feature on them here coming up at some point because they're just, I really dig them. So, all right. Well, tonight we are talking about the disturbing case of old Martin Bryant, old crazy carrot top himself or whatever <laughs> the fuck you want to call him. Uh, more of a blonde carrot top, I guess. Uh, the brutal mass murder at Port Arthur in Tasmania, Australia. The worst mass murder in Australian history. From 1996, he killed 35, injured 23. And as I mentioned, I got part of that interview I did with Mick, a former Australian federal police investigator, where he talks to me about Martin Bryant. So fucking we'll a. we'll give that to you. Mick is so fucking cool. Uh, we'll dig into the details for this great case. As Joey mentioned, we got a lot of Australian listeners, so shout out to you guys. Uh, we I know you guys dug it when we did Snowtown. Uh, you liked it when we did uh, Belanglo State Forest and old uh, Ivan Malat. Ivan, Ivan Malat and his crazy ass fucking nephew. Captain so we're going to get crazy tonight with some Martin Bryant. Chris, what did you know about this incident before we decided to do it? Uh, I knew that it was an ins- I knew it was a mass killing fucking and that's what was part of the reason for a lot of fucking Australia's gun laws and shit. Now, yeah, that's I didn't a really big know. part of the story. For yeah, sure. I didn't really yeah. know a whole lot about like the whole situation or whatever. But yeah, like you, I didn't really know a lot about it. Joey, I know you brought us up back when you first started coming out here. I remember you were saying you guys should do Port Arthur. You guys should do Port Arthur. And I knew about. Like Chris said, just kind of in general terms, but yeah, what is it about this one that you think would be a good one for our true crime listeners? Uh, I just find it like super intriguing 
and the fact that you can hear the tragedy, a tragedy that changed the whole fucking country, and the fact you can look up and see so much um, media about it. Fucking, oh, yeah. You know, journalism, news, and things like that. You can see the interviews with him. You can yeah. see the interviews with his mom. Like, yeah. There's a lot to look at into this, but, you know, somewhere like Australia at that time motherfuckers would get eaten by crocodiles and kicked by a kangaroo, but right. sh- mass shooting like that wasn't like really their forte, I'd say. No, not at all. So when that happened, it's just, it was really eye opening for them over there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So Martin Bryant was born in my birth year, 1967 in Hobart, Tasmania, as Joey pointed out. Uh, now for those of you that don't know a little history lesson here, Tasmania is an island state of Australia. It's like it, Hawaii is the United States. Exactly, Chris. It's about 150 miles south of the mainland. So it is a part of Australia, but it's on its own, as Chris pointed out, kind of like Hawaii uh, is to us. Uh, he was born to Maurice and Carlene Bryant. He was the first child and very difficult at an early age, uh, not wanting any affection. Uh, they would keep him on a leash. Did you I guys saw see that? that? Shit, dude. Yeah, like to avoid the- him from running off, and people would complain to like the police that they had their kid on a dog leash. That is kind of fucked up. And they're just like, well, that, at least we know he's safe right now. Right. Like, well, I, mean, uh, I mean, you see people with those, in essence, dog leashes. I mean, it's the right. same fucking thing. It is. Right. It's just, yeah. it was a dog leash. That's the problem. Right, right. <laughs> but it's the same fucking thing, right? Yeah, it's right? the same goddamn thing, yeah. So like Chris said, I mean, at least you know he's not running off because <laughs> he was running off. Dude. I mean, they couldn't keep him down. So uh, he's causing all sorts of havoc. He's got a younger sister. Uh, known to break his toys, and psychologists would say he's going to have problems holding down a job, living any sort of normal life. He's fucked in the head. He's fucked. Yeah, as Mick would say, he's just fucked, right? Yeah. Um, (laughs) Or Mick says we say. Um, He would be difficult to socialize with others, so that's not going to help. You know, we talk about these killers all the time with difficulty, you know, getting along with others being ostracized, being picked on. I mean, this is all the ingredients for fucking psychopath. Retaliation. Craziness. <laughs> uh, before his trial, he would, though, be formally diagnosed with Asperger's, which is a, a form of autism. Uh, my daughter, who's got a master's in this stuff, says it's an, he's on the au- autism spectrum, right. is how you would define Asperger's. So. Goes right over my head. I'm just I'm on a the dumbass. spectrum sometimes. <laughs> um, he was also diagnosed with having ADD, ADHD, and conduct disorder. Yeah, is what they call it. You gotta love the conduct disorder. I know. Especially it's just kids. being a pain in the ass. You know? <laughs> being a pain Constantly. in the ass. So, like many we've talked about, he's got that loner thing going on. Ridiculed by others, of course, because the way he acts. He would, like, jump on people's backs and, like, fuck with them all the time and just very, very odd. Um, And we've seen this with, you know, like, the likes of Ed Gein, Dahmer, Gacy, you know, these loners that don't get along with others very well and they get picked on some more than others. But Chris, uh, Martin Bryant, definitely a difficult child and so can't be easy to deal with him around the house. I mean, I can't imagine, like you said, when he was chained to the porch, he was only like, he was like two years old, just right. like taking off and they'd find him out in the middle of the field and shit, right. like sitting there playing by himself. Right. Like he's two years old. And then like, as he got older, like in top, uh, older toddler ages, he was just going all over the place and they could never find him. So like, I couldn't even imagine trying to raise a kid like that. Right. I put him in a fucking goddamn dog kennel. Fuck the leash. Right. Or he could have got in a tangle with a fucking Tasmanian yeah, devil. That's what I'm saying. Fucking kangaroo, some crazy shit. Everything down there can fucking kill you. Right. Pretty much, yeah. Right. Now, Joey, a six-year-old Martin is terrorizing and bullying now. So he's turning the tables and he's also torturing animals, which is never a good thing putting fucking little joeys in bags and smash them against the bricks and shit. Yeah. Right. Uh, no, I mean, he's, he's showing the signs and, you know, like you said, he did get diagnosed with Asperger's and 
that definitely showed like through the remainder of our story coming out with his uh, attitude. Right. And, and, you know, in 1979, he was involved in a fireworks incident where he was, they talked to him on the fucking, uh, on the news because right. he was in the hospital bed because, you know, he, I think he only burned his fucking pants and maybe something, something. like that. It wasn't yeah. that serious, but he's in the fucking thing. And the lady Lasso asked him, and yeah, and she's like, so are you going to play with fireworks again? He's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. So, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I learned a lesson, but I'm he's still like, going to do it. He's like, I learned a lesson, but I'm definitely still going to play with fireworks. <laughs> yeah. and like his attitude is exactly. Oh, yeah. You could tell, yeah. man. He's Dude. fucking just. All sorts of fucked up. Yeah, I didn't up, care. Man. There was that story about him shooting the fucking parrot out of the tree and then just, yeah. like, he had that fucking air rifle that his dad yeah. got. He'd just be shooting at random cars and shit, fucking right. whatever. People stopping to pick fruit and shit. And yeah, he's shooting, he's shooting at him and that parrot he shot out of the tree and then just right. walks up to it and, like, shoots it, like, six more times in the head and, like... Bl- obliterates it, just, yeah. like, holy shit, Yeah, dude. he's fucked up. He's fucked up. So he gets thrown out of school for picking on other kids in 1977, and then the following year... Um, seemed to be a little bit of improvement with him. Um, he continues, though, to pick on the younger kids, is eventually put into special education when he gets to high school in 1980. Uh, once there, his grades start to slip. Uh, he's acting out in class even worse. Uh, things are completely deteriorating in every way. Uh, was it this time his dad buys him, as you point out, Chris, oh, yeah, the old air like- rifle? <laughs> So probably not the best choice with this. Not with everything he was doing with that shit. I mean, he wasn't shooting cans. He was like literally shooting at people and and animals and and fucking all kinds of shit. Yeah. Shoot your eye out, kid. (laughs) Yeah. His dad would later regret it, said it was a terrible decision. Uh, I would agree with that. Uh, The cops would show up, you know, and he's fucking shooting people and birds and things he shouldn't be. So he is just being a uh, pain in the ass, number one. Told you we can't control him. Yeah, right. so you buy him a fucking gun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's let him learn his marksmanship Jesus. at a young age. Uh, his parents take him, though, to various doctors, including psychologists, who find his IQ is extremely low at 66. That's a pretty brutal number, though, oh, Joe, yeah. you know. But I think anything below 80 is, like, mentally challenged, so definitely below that. Um, He's got a legitimate learning disability at this point, not functioning at his age level. He's incredibly difficult to be around, as we've said. Oh, I can only imagine, dude. Yeah, and one doctor said, quote, he cannot read or write, does a bit of gardening, and watches TV. That was his assessment. The way it (laughs) seems like with him is not like, like, he probably could have learned to do that shit. He didn't want to, so he wasn't going to. Yeah, he didn't right. fucking. He's just like, and fuck that. Like, I don't care. Yeah, yeah I think you're the right. The effects of the Asperger's just defiant. Just, you know. so crazy. Yeah, so he leaves high school in 1983. Yeah, he's 15, not even 16 yet. Right. Just fucking like, fuck this shit. I don't care anymore. Exactly. He definitely ain't learning shit. Right. No. <laughs> now, Chris, remember when we did the old feather thief case? He used that Asperger's syndrome to get himself found not guilty, but. Old Martin doesn't have the same luck here. Not with the fucking shit he did. I mean, stealing some feathers and fucking right. the massacre fucking he <laughs> That's laid down. a good point. There's a huge yeah. fucking difference, man. Yeah, right? That's a good point. That's a good point. Now, Joey, things do change in Martin's life when he turns 18 in 1987, starts cutting lawns for some extra money, and he, he meets himself a woman. What, what's the deal with yeah, this? Helen man? Harvey, the thing with oh, Helen yeah. Harvey is she's... 54 right he's 18 but she won like a huge lottery so she had fucking money and like she, millions and she no, like she didn't win the lottery her fam- family like who, ran the fucking lottery ran co- it, that's what owned it was, the lottery yeah. company or some shit like something that. like that she's like yeah. the heiress of the lottery fucking business of the right. lottery itself yeah. right yeah that's something what it like was that, yeah but yeah so she has like all this fucking money at her disposal and you know she takes a whatever kind of liking you know to martin and if you listen to his mom tell it or like some of the other interviews, like there was nothing between them. Right. That's what the mom relationship wise. They just had a really good friendship, which, okay. So that might be the thing. But anyway, upon meeting her and becoming friends with her, he sees basically what he wants. He wants, he wants money. Right. Yeah. And he sees that she has it like that. She likes spending it with him. Yeah. And he could fuck it. That's his foot in the door. It was easy for him. Oh Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he, you know, he liked the company, I'm sure. You know, they just had this strange relationship. 
She was also known to be very stinky and wear dirty clothes. All kept the, time. the fucking house. It was like a mansion. Yeah. It was a total pigsty. The kitchen was completely overrun <laughs> with mold. I mean, it was really bad. Can you imagine mansion hoarders? Like, that would oh, be so God. much shit. They fucking, yeah, they too fucking much. had like fucking. She had like 20 dogs and like 40 fucking cats or some right. shit in that motherfucker, dude. <laughs> exactly. God That's damn, nasty. Dude. And she's yeah. not even fucking really technically supposed to have the animals. Right. Or like, or I guess she Well, here at first, when he pets, gets yeah. there, this is like a Harold and Maude, if you've ever right. seen that movie. <laughs> kind of reminds me of that. Young guy, older lady, or very older lady. Uh, like you said, Chris, 14 dogs, 40 cats. I could smell the fucking cat piss from all the God way over here. God damn it, dude. That is so fucking disgusting. I'm not a fan of cats, but when you have a bunch of them, it's Oof. almost impossible to keep that smell completely out. For real. And not Unless only you're there... like crazy diligent about cleaning up after them. And not only is the ammonia smell of the cat piss, there's also... The 79 year old fucking hag living there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, dude. yeah, her mom is living there. I'm old sure she Hilza. Don't smell too good either. Hilza no. living there. Um, neighbors are reporting them to the health authorities because of all these problems and adding to the stench. And I'm wondering if this, later when we do the killer cage match, I'm going to say that this was, <laughs> was the, the ammunition <laughs> for the yeah, gun. Yeah, okay? right, right. <laughs> Both of these women, the 54-year-old Helen and her, and her mom, as Joey said, 79, Hilza, both had infected leg ulcers, which sounds disgusting. Yeah, gross. Needs Yummy. to be with Sugar Babe doing her feet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but Hilza also has an undiagnosed broken hip. I they mean, said it was like two fuck. years she's had been right? like that, dude. How the I mean, she fuck? wasn't even leaving the bed, though, right? Right. I mean, that's I can't true. imagine. She so was just like, shitting and it. pissing where she sat. Yeah. Yeah, that's nasty. Uh, they both found Helen and her mother in desperate need to get to a hospital, so they did. Okay, and then they fucking take her to the hospital. <laughs> and she dies. <laughs> and she dies. In yeah. the nursing home. Like, maybe you should have left her home. She would have right? lived another 10 years. <laughs> right. And you all fucking tried exactly. to do something. Exactly. They know. took her out of her bed toilet, you know. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, Hilza, the 79-year-old mom, she dies a few weeks later in a nursing home. Helen, though, gets an order to clean her place up because it's fucking disgusting. The nursing home, they probably fucking killed her. They probably did. They could have. They're like, man, this bitch has gross shit on her way. <laughs> <I don't laughs> I'm wanna... not cleaning yeah. that fucking shit. <laughs> we got to take care of yeah, this. Yeah, let's just pull that plug. <laughs> uh, she's uh, Helen is admitted to the hospital for several weeks because she's all fucked up. But they have to clean the place up. And I thought this was amazing. Martin's dad... Yeah, like and spearheads fucking... this whole thing. Like, oh, yeah. I wouldn't have fucking done that. He hooks up his son. I guess. Um, they haul dumpster after dumpster of garbage, dirty clothes, is just it, funkiness. Like three, was it like three fucking weeks or some shit it took? Oh, it went on for a while, or yeah. some shit? Uh, hired a crew to do it. Uh, kitchen was full of mold. They had to clean that up. Um, Helen is out of the hospital now. She invites Martin to come live with her in this nice, clean, finally, mansion for the time being. And they are just spending an insane amount of money on cars. Did you see fucking this? sugar mama, dude. 30 cars in two years. Yeah. Like fucking drive, what the fuck? buy one, drive it for a few days and go fucking. <laughs> yeah, a, like some fucking, fucking uh, what one, was like? the Indian, the. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, what was Down that? Down in Oklahoma. Was, yeah. We did that episode. Yeah, the and, richest motherfucker remember. Easy. Yeah, they just drive the oh, car, yeah, runs yeah. out of gas, and Wrecking just leave it there and go yeah, buy another one. It. Like fuck it. Yeah. So there was some craziness there too, <laughs> but that kind of money, just just silly money. Apparently, Martin had a thing for jerking the wheel away from Helen uh-huh. while she was driving, which is weird. So she had to drive really slow when he was in the car. But I'm amazed she even let him drive with her. You know? Yeah, like you can't ride with me or get. Back seat, fucking yeah, exactly. Put that fucking leash on his ass again, <laughs> I guess. Uh, definitely turned out to be a bad decision. We'll get to that later. Chris, it was at this time he was reassessed for his disability pension, and it was noted in his file that Martin wants to go around and shooting shoot, people. Like straight told this guy that, yeah, yeah. like, and didn't nobody did anything about it either. No. It was just something he said. Fucking just he. Sh- if he leaves his parents, he's never going to be in control. 
he's got to be with his parents to be in any kind of control or whatever. Right. But the fact that he straight said, I just want to go around shooting people. And this doctor did nothing, dude. It's fucking crazy right there. It is. But remember when we did Columbine, you know, similar things with those two making these crazy videos and a lot of gun violence. And, you know, I I agree with I mean, you. I'm just saying that you could see where people are like, like well, it's easy to say later. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, at that time, I guess, you know, the, I don't know. I, I, it's hard to say what the what the guy's motivations were as a doctor to not do something about it. Maybe he could, you know, I don't know. I mean, I do say sometimes at work, I just want to fucking stab people. So, right. I mean, it but happens. that's different, <laughs> you know, when you do something kind of in anger or right, whatever. Right. And Martin's about to work his way into money. Oh, yeah. So you exactly. can fucking get yourself out of a lot of shit. Oh, yeah. And wipe a lot of shit clean. That's true. With money, that's so. true. Joey, 1991, Helen buys a farm. What's the deal with Big this? Big ass 72 acre farm because they've got all the fucking 100,000 cats and dogs or whatever. Because <laughs> yeah, they won't let them put more well, animals you can't in the have mansion. other animals. It's, right. Especially they want some ponies and fucking pot belly pigs and shit. Yeah. And so fucking they, she buys this fucking farm uh, in the town of Copping. And uh, they start fucking, you know, accumulating the animals there again. I don't know. Fucking crazy people in town, like, say they also have multiple animals with them, like miniature ponies and shit, fucking just sitting in the car while they're shopping and shit. That's just fucking crazy. They were also <laughs> fucking saying, because, uh, you know, he fucking started with the air rifles and fucking all these tourists that come by there because it's a fucking, like, well known fucking farm or whatever. Right. And fucking, he's out there with the fucking air fucking rifles, like fucking shooting at the tourists. He's <laughs> just not giving a shit. He's dude. already said that he wants to fucking shoot people. And now and he's, he's doing yeah, it, just not the way fucking, he wants to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, he's shooting these fucking tourists. I mean, he's out of fucking like, control. Like, do you come all the way out there to the farm and that's part of the experience? Like, yeah, I got shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. By this yeah. crazy motherfucker. Um, Maybe it should have been. Maybe if he's just able to shoot people with the air rifle all the time, he would have Yeah, that's fucking... true. That's true. October of 1992, Helen was killed in a head-on collision. What a surprise. While driving with Martin and a backseat full of dogs. That's really interesting. <laughs> Two of the dogs died in the accident. Uh, he winds up suffering from severe head and neck injuries and spends months in the hospital. And as we discussed, Martin had a thing for jerking the wheel, jump like diving at the wheel while she was driving. So the police interviewed him about it, but nothing but, comes of it. I mean, I'm sure even if he did it, he's just going to be like, hell no, I didn't do that. Exactly. Right. Uh, I'm sure they suspected that he had some involvement uh, with, you know, dealing with this fucking crazy ass, but nothing happens. So, but so my guess is now he, he acquires all it. this shit. Yeah. Right. Now he's got an estate. Exactly. And now a farm. he's got a fucking checkbook with no <laughs> bottom in it. Chris Helen made Martin her sole beneficiary. He's got the crazy. farm. He's got the mansion and almost a million dollars in cash. This dude's just like, all right, I got everything I need now. Right. So he wants to go out and buy some other property that she can't buy. But he fucking got all the money in the world. So he's trying to do what he can to have a good fucking time while it lasts. Before yeah. He goes on his fucking rampage. That's right. Yeah. Now, Joey, after he gets out of the hospital, he moves back home with his folks to recover. But his dad's actually keeping the farm and the mansion property up, which is kind of amazing to me that his dad like took a leave from work to go do this. Yeah, you know? takes care of this fucking property that's bigger than the one that he owns. Right. You know, for yeah, his maybe son. he figured his son was going to give him some money. I maybe. don't know. I mean, who uh, knows? It's also a possibility, you know, as his dad, maybe he fucking viewed that as like one of the last fucking things that could keep his fucking son on a normal path. Yeah. And he could keep an eye on him because yeah. he's there tending to the place. Like, so he's not just letting him run fucking but wild. He, did. he fucking made sure that it was kept up and that fucking everything was fine for by the time that, you know, Martin was back or. Yeah. After all the fucking. But he was the dad was suffering from depression. He was right. taking medication for it. So the yeah. dad was having some issues. Uh, two months later, someone that was coming to look for Martin's dad, Maurice. He's like, this cocksucker son of mine bangs this old bitch and gets this big ass. <laughs> right? what That's the why fuck, he's depressed, because he's fucking, right? exactly. he's like, I'm going to go over here and fucking mow the lawn look like a little bitch. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so somebody goes, oh, looking for old Maurice at the farm in Copping. His dad was trying to set up a trust fund 
to avoid Martin blowing through the money, which is probably a good idea. And there's oh. a note on the door that says, call the police. So that's not good. Uh, there was thousands of dollars in Maurice's car. Uh, the police searched the property and found his body floating in a dam with a diving weight belt around his neck. So Chris, Seems pretty suspicious. fucked up. It was ruled as a fucking drown- uh, accidental drowning though. So, right. And then he, even when they pulled his dad's body out of the fucking Yeah, ground, what was his he reaction? He just kind of fucking just like shrugs and laughs about it and walks away like yeah. don't even fucking care. Like, yep, that's him. Fuck yeah. it. Don't care. Cops are just like, what the fuck, man? This is your dad. And I'm guessing, Joey, that his reaction probably was somewhat affected by his autism, I would assume. Yeah, also just for the fact that he was empathetic to begin with. Right, I don't think which is a big psychopath thing. Yeah, right? he, he uh, didn't see tragedy or fucking um, worry about death in the way that a lot of people in his age group, I would say. Right. Uh, his education or his IQ might be part of why that is. Right. Because he just didn't have a fucking, you know, a more built up fucking structure for fucking feelings and emotions. Right. Uh, You don't know what it is, but he definitely fucking didn't care too much. No, he really didn't. So whatever he did, what he's eventually going to do, it's not like people were like, oh, fuck, I didn't see that one coming. Right. They were like, oh, yeah, that dude. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the it. cops. <laughs> yeah, I see it. Especially the cops that were dealing with it all the time and the neighbors. Yeah. So Martin winds up even richer now because his dad left him some money. Uh, he set it up this way so that he knew Martin was going to need money to tend to his medical needs. Basically set him up that way he's good for life and everything. Yeah. So he is like completely hooked the fuck up. Um, but just what he needs, a bunch of money. Thank God there wasn't Amazon back then, because this fool would have been just ordering fucking shit every five minutes. Um, he, he also had the death of two people close to him, which you would think would fuck you up. But because he didn't have feelings like a normal person, then maybe it, it didn't. I don't know. by like nothing happened, pretty yeah. much. Um, you have to wonder if He's they got, got into money, it. Son. What's that? He's got that money, son. That's all he needs. That's right. But you have to wonder, did he get into it with his dad about that trust fund? Like he didn't want him doing it? You know, limiting his access? I don't know. Hard to say, right? They found a suicide note But in there car. was a suicide note with the dad. So, you know, it does seem legit like it was a suicide. Not that Martin killed him and then tried to make it look like that because I don't think he had the mental capacity to do that. Uh, Would you agree? Probably not. Yeah, I wouldn't think so, but I mean, he definitely fucking killed a lot of people eventually. So that's true. It's possible, but I don't think so either. Right. Uh, Martin was acting all inappropriate, staring at the female police <laughs> officers. <all> inappropriately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's just looking at him like, "What up?" <laughs> yeah, you want to hang out after this is over with? <laughs> Pretty uh, much Martin's- hitting on him and shit, dude. Like. <laughs> Martin sold the farm for 200000 and moves into the mansion. And he also had a thing for collecting porn videos of hardcore stuff and bestiality. And I mean, the yeah. motherfucker had animals at his disposal, so he's right. probably yeah. making it. He's probably you would think, <laughs> man. You would think. Uh, Martin starts dressing all crazy with these electric blue suits, ruffled shirts, He's wearing this shit around town, going out to eat. People are fucking laughing at him. Feeling very lonely, though. He buys plane tickets to fly around the world because he would have to sit next to people that would have no choice but but to to talk to him. listen to him talk and shit. Dude, I'd be like, dude, shut the fuck up, man. Exactly. I'm not trying to hear your shit. Exactly. (laughs) I mean, I... Yeah, fuck that. I mean, yeah, (laughs) exactly. But... He likes doing this, and he's trying, he said, to find somewhere in the world where they would treat him right, but everywhere he goes, he's mocked and ridiculed, which is shitty, but at the same time, like, what the fuck are these people supposed to do when somebody's acting like this dude was, you know? Right, and I mean... Obviously, he's not gotten the help that he needs for it anyway. And right. I don't think he thinks he, he needs to help. be in a hospital is right. where he needs to be, not out running around. Um, no matter where he went, you know, this is what's going on. And this would have been between 93 and 95 when this was happening. So, Chris, all this is leading up to what Martin Bryant is known for. He feels the whole world is against him, and he's got a shitload of money 
to buy what, Chris? Popcorn or what's he buying? All the pop pops. Yeah, I mean, fuck, he's buying guns, man. Like, I think it was an AR-15, AR-10, and a 12-gauge. And fucking, he even went to go get a fucking goddamn bag to put it all in. He took a tape measure, measured how long right. the bag was. Made sure like, the guns, made sure would, guns fit. would fit in his bag. I mean, that's a little bit of thinking ahead there. That's some thoughts that's about true. it. That's true. That's a good point. If, you that's think a of, good if point. he's thinking about like a, taking a tape measure and shit, fucking. Right. He right. thought about it, but he's about to go fucking crazy, though. Like crazier. Exactly. Um, and, you know, at this time, as we pointed out, the gun situation in Australia much different than it is today right. this, because this is a, of this. Yeah, this is a huge reason. So, Joey, he starts consuming alcohol, so that's never a good thing. He's already depressed, so that's not going to make it any better. No, and he's got money and a fucking, you know, uh, in, involvement with weapons now right. to go with it. Right. <laughs> so, I mean... It, was he suicidal? Was he not? He fucking... I think he wanted to get famous off the fucking killings. Right. Um, you have to on, wonder, was it like a death by cop type thing? Like he knew eventually they were going to shoot so, him? That's the only part about this whole fucking case that I don't really get. Because you would think after <clears throat> killing all those people... You would go down and either kill yourself, right, or let them kill you. Yeah, suicide right. by cop. Yeah, and he didn't. He fucking got apprehended, <clears throat> and he, I don't know, like if he could ever take that one back, I'm sure he would because he seems like he's miserable in fucking prison. Which good, oh, yeah. like he deserves to be miserable, but uh, like if that motherfucker. I I think that. As far as criminals go, to watch somebody pay a price, if you look at him, that's somebody you can see. If you, you know, see how his day ins and days out have been in that fucking prison, like, he's fucking doing time. Oh, yeah. Right. But so I don't know. So that's why it's hard for me. Like, did he go in with the intention of, oh, yeah, I'm going to fucking kill myself and he couldn't fucking do it? Right. Did he end up in a situation where, you know, the time he was looking at the certain cop in the eye and he knew it was his time to give up, he just gave up? Right. You know, yeah, it's hard to say, man. That's, yeah, it's the only part I don't really get. Yeah. Now, I read that his daily alcohol consumption was a half bottle of Sambuca. Yeah. What the fuck is Sambuca? It's gross. Okay. It's like licorice. Is let, it? Me, yeah. let me pull out my knowledge real quick <laughs> to help with this. Because yeah, uh, Sa- Sambuca is gross. But the only thing that I do know, and I know it because of my job, because we get licorice brought in. Do you drink it straight? And licorice, yeah, I mean, some people do. Yeah. But licorice is an Australian import. Basically, like, they love licorice over there, apparently. Oh, okay. So, knowing that now, that makes sense to me why motherfuckers in Australia would be drinking Sambuca. Okay. Because if they love licorice, then... Right, right. But right. well, holy fuck, I, I drank some of that shit before, and oh, I wanted to die. It's fucking gross. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds gross. Do you, do you like black licorice? No. Yeah, it's fucking awful. Oh, my God. <laughs> would you go... It's like liquid black licorice? Yeah. Uh, Would yeah, you go no. a double shot of fucking Sambuca or a double shot of Malort? Ooh, fuck. I've heard bad things about Malort. That's like a tough one. That's a tough one, bad, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Both of them are like basically in the same category. Anyway. <laughs> also, so he's drinking a half bottle of Sambuca every day, a bottle of Bailey's Irish Cream. And he's wine. also drinking wine and an assortment of sweet alcoholic <laughs> Like, how is your stomach even handling I don't even that? know, dude. I don't that want nothing to sick. do with any of that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so sweet, the dude. The acid indigestion that I'm thinking oh, of just God. reading Oh, God, blood that. sugar's got to just dude, be, like, going crazy. I imagine Chris, I mean, that. is this nation worthy? No, no, no. <laughs> no? no? I mean, he I'm wouldn't good, even. Dude. There's No? No. Okay, I'm just, I was I mean, curious. This, as, uh, maybe if the Justin sweet alcoholic get down like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> maybe if the sweet alcoholic drink was a fucking big old fucking barrel of jungle juice, that's uh. a little different. <laughs> <laughs> I did see in one documentary that Martin set his alarm for six a.m. that morning of the massacre, and he was never known to set an alarm. And I found this very didn't have to oddly go similar guys who just did Howard Unruh, right? Who also set an alarm for seven a.m. For his walk of death, we did that episode here just recently. Thought it was Dude. an odd coincidence. Didn't uh, Klebold and Harris set alarms for I, for uh, the Columbine I think they shooting? Did. 
I think they might have. Yeah, I couldn't. Right. I, I thought offhand, that there was something yeah. with the alarm, like it was an earlier alarm than they typically would. I'm not sure. I it's maybe. I know we do so many of these cases, right. they all kind of blur. But I knew for sure it was Howard Unruh. And I smoke mad weed, so. I <laughs> <laughs> Joey, he would later say that his plans at Port Arthur began weeks before he decided to start things off at that bed and breakfast near Port Arthur called Seascape. What was the deal with that, man? Well, and even to, to back it up just a tiny bit more, you were saying, you know, his plans were starting weeks before that. Right. I believe it was within two weeks before this, there was a, a shooting in, in Scotland. Okay. I think Glasgow or something, uh, where 16 people were killed there. And I feel like Martin Bryant... Oh, feeling that and feeling a high from that like fucking whole situation yeah definitely fucking i in my opinion i think that was part of the push yeah. but anyway so the 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 seascape which was a bed and breakfast like you said this was a property that his dad wanted to right. purchase like he really wanted this thing right but these uh, people came in and they bought it. They were friends of his. They knew he was going to buy it. Right. And they and came they in and lowballed or first. got it for him. And then Instead, fucking. Yeah. So then they wouldn't sell it to him. They had another property. They also wouldn't sell to him. Oh, wow. So to Martin Bryant. He's seeing that these fucking people are fucking his dad around, right? Uh, and his dad's gone now. So and he's now like, his dad's motherfucker, gone. Right. You know. So. The seascape is definitely a focal point of the fucking massacre that he's going to go on. Right. And he's going to go there first off. Right. Because he's going to fucking drop off some shit for later on. Right. Because he knows he's going to end up back there, so he's going to make sure he has ammunition by the time he gets back. He might have had a little bit more wherewithal than people are giving him credit. Because yeah. he knows that that's going to be right. his last stand. That's, what that's I'm where saying. he's going to go. I think he just didn't want to fucking learn shit. I think you're. I think you're right. I think Joe. he learned the tactical shit that he wanted. Right. To, but as far as this shit, like he figured this shit out, and right, like he saw people that were pulling up to the seascape whenever he first got there, and he's like saying hi to them, and he's like, "Oh, you guys should come back in a little while and get a cup of coffee." And it's just like, wow. that's creepy as fuck. That is yeah, creepy t- as telling fuck. Telling them to come back because you know what you're going to do. For exactly. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So April 28th, 1996 is when this all goes down. It goes into the 29th, though, but it starts here April 28th. I mean, he almost blamed them for his father's I was going to say that, that, yeah, he blamed them for his father's depression because right, he was upset right. that he didn't, he didn't get the get property. That property. Yeah. So there's a lot of, you know, hatred there with him with these two. And so he goes in there, blows this old couple away. First the woman, I think, then the then the man, kills them both. Was there anyone else he killed inside there? Not then in there, just those two. I think it just was the, just those yeah. two as well. Which their last names was Martin, which is funny. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, he stores a bunch of ammo there, planning to go back. Of course, like I said, make his last stand. So now he heads to Port Arthur, which is a few miles away. It's a former prison. That became a tourist destination, kind of like Alcatraz. Um, unfortunately, there was about 500 tourists there that day. So it was a busy day. Uh, this was about 45 minutes away from where Martin lived. Uh, so remember, this would have been before cell phones were common and definitely nothing like they are today. So you're not right. going like to get like footage tweets like camcorder and like footage. videos and stuff of people using their phones. Uh, the, the internet, deaths. you know, <laughs> they're just like, oh shit, film all this shit. Right. right. <laughs> uh, Martin made two stops along the way, though, for a bottle of tomato sauce, which is definitely weird. <laughs> and I had read that he liked to go into stores and just buy random stuff so he could talk to the cashier. That's fucking oh, weird as fuck, dude. Really weird. I mean, such a lonely guy. It's sad. I mean, that he's got to go in on the way to his fucking massacre. <laughs> Let's buy a can of tomato sauce. So I you can know? talk to somebody. So I could talk to the clerk. Really weird. Uh, Martin like went to the Broad Arrow Cafe at there, Port Arthur. Uh, he was talking to himself, acting all fucking weird. Uh, made several racist comments I saw against the Asian tourists. So that's fucked up. <laughs> 
He had a large duffel bag, as Chris pointed out, filled with guns and ammo. But that's the thing is he was kind of slick because he pulls in. He's got a surfboard on top of his fucking Yeah, he tells everybody he's going to really surfing and shit. So he's looking just, and the way he looked, like with his hair and all that, like, like that's a surfer dude right there. Right. And he pulls up, he's got a a surfboard, and then the bag, you know, while it's also fucking the right size for everything, it's a fucking Prince tennis bag. Okay. So it's like... It's super inconspicuous at a fucking you know a resort. A resort, area. yeah. I'm sure there was probably tennis courts or something there. I'm sure. So that's you're a not good even point. thinking like if somebody walks up with just a straight up duffel bag, then you might be a little bit like, what the fuck? Right. But he, I mean, he wasn't fucking drawing attention at all with no. that. So no, but then he takes out the knife that he stabbed yeah. <laughs> the fucking guy at the bed and breakfast with, covered in blood. Chris just sets it out there on the table. Yep. So people are getting a little concerned. Then he sets up a video camera on a table in the cafeteria, but I didn't see. I wonder if you guys knew. Did any of that? Did he record any of that? I've never heard of it. I've I've never heard of it. I had neither, and I was trying to find it. Did he use the camera? I mean, he set it up. I mean, all he would have had to do was hit record, but apparently no, because I haven't heard either of any kind of footage or you know anything like or that unless right. it was just buried evidence that would have been fucked up to see for sure they're just like uh oh, we never we don't need to yeah, show this to anyone throw this ever. in the fucking incinerator yeah uh chris he busts out an ar-15 starts shooting with jacketed rounds that would cause more damage yeah. absolute fucking chaos dude it just goes off and it's in a small room like 15 seconds he gets like 17 people and shit like Right, like kills seventeen. He kills, no, kills 12, twelve, wounds yeah. ten, and fucking. But it's just crazy because it's a small, like I said, it's a small ass room. He's got this high powered rifle with fucking armor piercing rounds. So even if you're trying to hide behind a counter or something, it's going through that and tagging people. So it's, it's fucking going to be crazy, dude. And a lot kids, of kids. I mean, no, yeah, it, it just no, whatever. No shit's given, dude. He fucking shot everyone, and I, with I no think remorse. There was a guy in there whenever he first started. Who was like, I think his kid and his wife were in there, and he fucking went to go fucking shield him, and he was like, uh, uh, "No, not in here." That's what he yelled at fucking Martin Bryant. Oh wow! Like, like, don't open fire up in here with all these people and kid. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Yeah, creepy as hell. It's fucked up. So now Joey, he moves to the gift shop, kills another eight, wounds two more. He's fucking on fire at this point oh yeah he's fucking in his fucking groove by now like right he's made it past the initial jitters the shit's fucking wide right, open, right. he's ready to and go he's like got control these people are fucking scared all around him and he's fucking getting kills you know what i'm saying which is what's what fucked up though is those people outside heard yeah. the shots yeah. they thought it was like a, a reenactment or something right like or like batman whatever fucking. yeah so they're trying to get in and here's these people trying to get out. So yeah. it was just like this big mess at the door. It was know? chaos. And it made me fucking it, like we just did the fucking station house fire, the great white show. Yeah. And like how you watch that video, Desperate, and like, man. the shit goes up in flames and it's a good 30 seconds before some people are like, okay, now we should probably get out of here. Right. right. And that's kind of like what this was, was like, Oh, what the fuck's going on here? Let me take a look. It's like, man, any, any, every second you have to get further away from his range of bullets. Right. That's important right now. Oh, right? Yeah. And you're just like holding up fucking other people and fucking putting yourself in the fucking situation. Yeah. Fucking crazy crazy but you can't it you can't ever determine how a single person is going to act in any certain situation right what their fucking comprehending is going on or anything like that so right when i was in the army in basic you know when they started getting up to like live fire shooting tracer rounds over our heads and shit they try to get you scared right they try to get you used to chaos right like shit yeah, blowing sure. up around you and just you got to keep you know, low crawling across this sand field and they're blowing shit up around you. They're shooting tracer rounds up about eight feet high. So they're not that, I mean, it feels like they're right out your head. Oh, but yeah. They're dude. significantly they're over it, but still pretty <laughs> fucked up, man. Yeah. They did that to us all night one night, you know, and they would shine the light down the groove that your helmet would make in the sand when you got to the other side. They would shine the light down there, and if there was any break in that groove, that meant you picked your head up and you had to do it again. Damn, you had to keep doing it till you didn't do, you didn't move your head. 
Damn. It was fucked up. And of course, everybody's fucking up. So that's that's all part of the fun. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But, uh, but it teaches you to not be affected. But the average person not going to be trained like right. that would be freaking the fuck out. Okay. Um, he moves outside. He kills four more, wounds another six with a three oh eight rifle. One woman was shot in the leg, and I saw bone fragments from her leg injured a man close That's by. Fucked up. That's, That's brutal fucked. As shit, dude. Exactly. Leg shrapnel gets you That's injured. That's like a Cannibal Corpse song. There. I mean, God you know, damn. really. Uh, now Martin's going for the tour buses. Start shooting people with armor-piercing fucking rounds in the tour bus. People are freaking the fuck out. They're calling the cops, who are about 15 miles away. And he gets in this old yellow fucking Volvo with, <laughs> with the, the surfboard, surfboard tied to the still. roof. This like, for the next serial car rental commercial. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a good one. Yeah. We could do one down under. Yeah. Maybe um, um, Malat's fucking pickup truck, yeah. you know. Catherine Knight's grocery getter. <laughs> and old Martin Bryant's yellow Volvo oh, with yeah. the fucking surfboard tied to it. He drives a few hundred yards from the parking lot. He finds this woman walking. She used to, uh, she was a guide dude. there, at Port yeah. Arthur. She had her two little girls with her. This like is fucking little. the worst shit ever, dude. It is fucked up. He makes her and the one girl get on their knees. He kills them execution style. Then the three-year-old runs away behind a tree. He goes up and shoots this yeah, fucking three-year-old in the neck down. Yeah. and fucking kills her. That is fucked. I mean, that is beyond fucked up. Who didn't care? No. And when they first Not saw caring. him, they didn't realize that he was the shooter or anything yeah, like that. She thought they right. were there for help. Yeah. So, like, they fucking, she ran to him, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking he was there to help. Yeah. Right. Uh, there is a lot of confusion now. Cars are trying to turn around, I can imagine. Uh, Martin steals now a BMW. This is like a video game now. Yeah, it's right. like, like fucking GTA. Car, exactly. It's like GTA, dude. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, steals a BMW after killing everyone inside. He drives off with some of his weapons and ammo. Stops a couple at a in a Toyota at a gas station. Orders the guy into the trunk of the BMW, but then shoots the woman. the woman. Yeah, that, but she was driving, shoots her. Now he's got pears in the boot. In the right? boot, yeah. In the boot. <laughs> um, shooting at random cars down the highway as he's driving. <laughs> he's just cruising down, just blasting off shots at cars. While he- <laughs> what the fuck, man? I, I mean, mean, we thought was, OJ was bad. This is beyond that, man. And, this and is fucking, fucking insane. Taking that dude hostage was completely pointless. No, yeah, one hundred percent. It was just like you know what? I want to get a hostage. Like fuck yeah. yeah. I, I was wondering I'm about that. Doing Why did all this what was crazy the point? shit? Fucking let me try this. Yeah, what was the point in that? I was wondering about that. Yeah, I don't think he was. I think it was just in the moment, you know. Uh, he ends and up he at the bread. Use, and, well, I was gonna say, yeah, he doesn't use them to negotiate later at on. all. Right. So no. He ends up back at the bed and breakfast where he started, and he had all that ammo and shit there, so now he's preparing to fucking, you know, make his stand there. He lights the BMW on fire. fuck this thing. (laughs) Fuck this. Goes in the house with the hostage from the trunk. So at least he doesn't leave the guy in the trunk burning alive, but he barricades himself up inside. And at the hospital in the area, the victims are now pouring in. So they're all getting to the hospital. And it's like the hospitals are there. like, wow, this really is happening. Holy right. shit. Right. So, Chris, the cops now show up at the bed and breakfast, and they attempt to get him to surrender. What the fuck happens, man? For some reason, he starts calling himself Jamie. Like, yeah, no, this is a fucking... Martin, this is Jamie. Fucking yeah, that was weird because he said he wanted the notoriety. Yeah, so, so why would he, why would he use a fake name? Which is, I don't, I don't know. But well, and forever in his interrogations, he fucking would never say he did the shit. No, either. never once. Even though he's like, yeah, it's me, but I'm never going to admit that I did it. It's right. like, what wait, the you fuck? just kind of admitted that, no? Yeah, really, really weird. But he, he refuses fucking, to come out though. Yeah, he pretty much had the fucking cops like they were down in a ditch, basically, like with a straight up shootout with the yeah. cops. Like had <laughs> had the cops pinned down by himself, dude. They were there all fucking night, and then I can't remember how they got fucking... Oh, yeah, he fucking lit the house on fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so the next... So he's there all night. But he shot and killed that Paris dude, though. Yeah, he got yeah. the the hostage. Him, he yeah, he killed bullet, him. Yeah. yeah, that was sad. He kills that hostage right away. 
um, 18 hour stand. I think he's treated for these bruises or these burns to it's, his ass and his back from he being was on in the fire, fire when he came out of the house, dude. <laughs> So he lights the house on fire, and he's fucking caught in the fire. So his ass and his back are on fire. They fucking treat him for his wounds and send his ass to the hospital yeah, where the victims are. The same are. hospital where the victims are. Yeah, yeah which is fun. exactly what happened with Howard Unruh, right? Yeah. Yep. So that's another weird coincidence with these two. Now, Joey, one of the things that I talked with Mick about was how the police reacted. And I know when we did Columbine, this was a big thing. Yeah, I mean... <clears throat> things changed after this as they also changed after Columbine. But it, it, it was like at this time, the police force assessed that there was uh, an issue going on in a certain area and they would just try to cordon off that area and keep it defensive so basically it wouldn't spread out. Right. Where now uh, it seems like, well, every fucking second counts for some of the people that may be in there, some of the hostages. Right. So now it's more of a fucking, you know, uh, an advancement fucking right away where they try to infiltrate and get to the problem and shut it down. Right. But yeah, at this time, though, it, it was a little bit slower. Um, you know, at the time, they probably didn't realize that to everything was as serious as what it was. And then yeah. they get there and they're like, oh, fuck. And then they're fucking confused because they're not used to dealing with shit like that. So right. it's kind of a fucking madhouse. Dude's still shooting people. I mean, yeah, it was probably a fucking tough time for them. And they took a lot of fucking shit for it. They did. But like Mick said, that's how they dealt with active exactly. shooters back then. And they surrounded the, the place and just waited out. Off, you know? And that was the biggest one. Vince Lee would be another example. Exactly. Right? So after this, I mean, they didn't have this before this. So yeah, in hindsight, so it's easier to say. Right. Did they do something after this to learn from and try to? I'm fuck sure. It? Now they I'm have. Sure. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. So let's listen to a piece of the interview that I did with Mick, the former Australian Federal Police investigator. Um, as we mentioned, he's a listener and he's a six 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 club member. So he is a cool pimp. motherfucker. Pimp. So let's Episode, check it out. Of course, on the famous Australian case, I uh, wanted to see your thoughts on the Port Arthur, Tasmania mm. massacre. Just absolutely horrible uh, incident. And, you know, like we were talking about, you know, you don't typically see these types of mass murder incidents in Australia like we do here in the United States, unfortunately. No, that's that's very true. That's very true. So... You know, like anywhere, you know, that has access to firearms, any country, we've got examples of it. Right. You know, Port Arthur's obviously the most famous one. Right. You know, just waving to my wife, she's walking out. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, look, that's obviously the most famous one. I think it's like, you know, the third worst mass shooting in, in history. Yeah, it's amazing you know, to it's, think the worst one, I think, is in Norway. That guy, didn't he kill yeah. like 60 who would have ever yeah. thought Norway would lead the right. lead the pack? So it happens everywhere, but it, it does, does seem it like does. here in the U.S., especially with the twenty four seven news cycle, it just seems like mm. it's a lot more common. I'm about two hours south of Chicago, and every weekend up there, there's thirty or forty shootings every weekend. Wow. It's insane! Wow. It's insane! Yeah. But this so turned it'll... Australia on its ear. Yeah, mate, it did. It did. You know, so it's like. We, we've got examples of, you know, things over the years, you know, but they tend to be more, you know, familial based. So, you know, someone might shoot members of their family and then turn the firearm on themselves. Right. You know, you know, that sort of murder suicide side of things. And, you know, and like most colonial countries, you know, we've got examples of, you know, colonial brutality in the past where indigenous people, you know, were, were massacred. But as far as, I suppose, you know, this type of thing, you know, as I said, we're, we're not a country that's, that's, you know, built on independence. We're not a country that had to fight for its independence. You know, we're not that, you know, like a, your second amendment. We don't have anything, anything close to that, you know, really, you know, in our constitution, you know, so we haven't had to fight for our freedom, you know, the same way as I suppose the States do, you know, or your youth folks had to So firearms, you know, are not that common. You know, in Australia, you've you got to have a license. You know, and you can only have a license for you know one or two reasons. One, you're a member of a sporting shooters club. You know, and secondly, you own you know some land. You know, and you use it to to kill feral animals. Oh wow! Yeah, Any other reason the, than that? 
the laws changed at right after this incident because yeah. of it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, our prime minister at the time, you know, a lot of people don't like prime ministers, but, you know, it's one of the smartest <laughs> things I think he did was that, you know, he, he got rid of all of the semi-automatic, you know, and fully automatic you know, high-powered rifles, you know, or, or firearms, and tried to implement like a national licensing process. Okay. So each each state had its own, you know, and they never spoke to each other. So you could have lost your license in one state, then gone to another one and picked it up. Sure. You know, so he obviously, you know, said, we can't have anything like this again. You know, we had a massive buyback, you know, so the government actually paid you to hand your firearms in. Right. So there was a, there was a, like an amnesty that you could, you know, if they were unregistered, you could just go and drop them off and they destroy them or they buy them back off you. Yeah, it was almost a million. I saw it was like 800,000. That's, that's crazy. But that's smart. I mean, if you really want to get them Mm. off the, off the street my argument against that of course is a, a crazy person's gonna do what they're gonna do i mean just like we did the bath school disaster in michigan yeah. with that mm-hmm. guy blew up the school with uh, pyrotechnics so i mean it, it sure makes it easier i think with the high-powered weapons so I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not opposed to you know taking those off the streets especially for you know people that uh, don't have a damn good reason to, to have it you mm. know oh look absolutely if you're a hunter you've got a reason for it right. you know w- working you know in police part of what we also did was you know we would do license checks or compliance checks on people you know so you just didn't get a license a firearm and a license you right. know we have a registry you'd have to go around maybe i don't know say once every six months you know and just do an audit on them, make sure all of the firearms that they've got registered are registered and they're kept in a you know a lockable safe and you, know, you can't hang them on a wall. And wow. So there's there's still that ability to to have firearms if you've got them for a legitimate reason. You know, it's just not that every every man, woman, and child essentially, you know, has that ability just to to easily access. Right. And I I suppose the thing that, that opened my eyes up to to maybe some of the issues was I watched Michael Moore's bowling with Columbine. Yeah. You know, you know, years ago and it was like, hang on a minute, you can go to Kmart. You can go to Kmart and can get fire, you can get <laughs> right. ammunition. Right. You can't get ammunition here in you know in Kmart. <laughs> right. You know, so it was and you know, it's not a, as I said, it's not a criticism. It's just you guys come from a completely oh, different, yeah. different background. Oh no, I agree. You know, had to fight for your in independence, you know, that that whole sort of issue, whereas we just got ours in 1906 or something. Right, right. Yeah, it's interesting perspective for sure. Now, the the guy that did this, Martin Bryant, he boasted that one of his main motivations for doing this was notoriety, but he obviously had some, you know, he was a diminished uh, intelligence. Uh, he had some obvious mental health issues, but what was his what was his deal? I mean, what, what do you make of this whole thing with him? Oh, you know, it, complicated. It's, my unbelievably, because he hasn't really done a lot of like interviews with people. Right. You know, you can see, you know, the some of the police interviews on on the internet. You know, and right. In some of the documentaries. Right. But there hasn't really been, you know, like you've had with other people. You know, if someone sit down with him and say, "Mate, tell us what was going through your head." Right, his mom said yeah. he won't even talk about it because she's the only one no. that visits him. And I mm. watched a sixty minute special on it on an anniversary yeah. of it here not that long ago, and uh, she was saying he won't talk about it. I mean, that, that any time she's brought it up, he just clams up. So, I mean, yeah, well, you know, there's a it's strange in Australia, you know, that we've there's there's two arguments. You know, one is that obviously Martin's clearly the person who did it. Right, you know, but but secondly, you know, there's a bit of a conspiracy theory that it yeah, wasn't Martin at all. I did was, see that. Know, like there was like how know, many witnesses? Oh, you know, exactly. I mean, it's kind of hard to deny it. But yes, yeah, that's what his mom was saying on 60 Minutes. Is originally she was the one that convinced him to uh, turn himself or admit to yeah. it, 
and now later recants that says she doesn't think he was even there and i'm like what do you mean he wasn't there like you had all sorts of witnesses wasn't there like video of him there too i thought video and you know during the interviews that he did with police like you know he's drawing maps of right you know the the the, the diner yeah yeah the diner and who who he (laughs) shot first unfortunately so like there's still and there's still you know people who believe that you know, Martin didn't do it. Yeah, some you sort know. of police. I saw that with the police cover-up. My wife and I were looking and go, wow, it's not just here in the United States that they make nah, these mate. outlandish fucking statements about the police. I mean, I'm not it saying was... the police are without fault, but, I mean, come on. Oh, I mean, no. you guys do a tough job. I completely respect it, and I, I don't like it when I hear people just immediately go to that default of it was the cops or they set him up, you know, something like that. Oh, look, you know, and it, it all, it all came out of, you know, a single, I think, throwaway comment by a politician a couple of years earlier, you know, cause there was a discussion around, you know, gun control and better oh. licensing and some politician somewhere, had made this throwaway comment like, oh, the only re- the only way that could ever happen is if there was a massacre report after. Yeah, that was cool for Mick to talk to me about oh, the yeah. case and learned More a insight. little bit about it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, cool guy. And we'll have more of that interview when we do an episode on David Burney, which will be coming up here in the near future, I'm sure. Um, and I asked him about that case. I asked him about some other stuff. So it's a good interview. Our 666 Club members... Of course, I've already heard it. So oh, yeah, you guys, uh, that's one of the benefits of being in that 666, 666 club, Joey, you know? Yeah. All that bonus shit like that. Necessary. Uh, Martin uh, talked freely with the cops, as uh, uh, Mick was pointing out, told them, you know, where he did, what he did, the order of operations here. Uh, there's videos of those interrogations if you want to watch them on just, YouTube, but it's kind of... He just sitting there smiling, laughing, laughing yeah. having a good it's like old showing time, him dude. how he held the gun like by his hip. But and he didn't shot. do it. But he didn't do it. Right. Of the course. best part's when they pull the gun over there and he's like, Can I hold it? And he reaches out and they're like, right. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> So he's loving the attention. So. It's just such a fucked up story. Um he told his lawyers that he wished he could have killed more. And uh, witnesses would say he was laughing maniacally while he was shooting people. That's just <sighs> fucked. Wow. <laughs> Chris, originally Bryant was pleading not guilty, but then changes his play to gu- pleaded guilty. Uh, what kind of time did he wind up well, getting? He got, uh, well, he got charged like with fucking like 75 different fucking crimes, dude. Yeah. Like, that's a lot. Like the, the murder <laughs> charges, the attempted murder charges. Fucking right. Kidnapping. Kidnapping, setting the house on fire. Just so many fucking right, just right. They're like, no, you're getting all everything. Jaywalking. Dude. Yeah, right? Like every little thing. <laughs> fucking, but yeah, he ended up getting fucking uh, found guilty, obviously, in fucking 35 life sentences, sentences yeah. without parole. So right. See, they were fucking, right. he pretty was rare in Australia to get oh, a yeah. whole life like that. Yeah. But he was trying to, he was like, Trying to plead guilty to the fucking killings. Right. But he was trying to plead not guilty to the fucking attempted murders. <clears throat> and they were saying that he was fucking doing that because he was trying to be a fucking dick and have have to have a trial. So those people that he maimed would have to come in and, and, and say, hey, you're the one that did this right, to me. Right. Like he wanted that attention too. Right. And fucking they came at him and they were like, you're just doing this to fucking to be drag an it out. Wow. Yeah, and basically be an asshole. And yeah, eventually he fucking broke down and he just fucking said, I, and he wrote that fucking letter and it looks like a six year old. Right. Brother. He's like, I plead guilty to all 75 counts. For right. Me. Yeah, it's fucked up. Uh, he spends months at a mental hospital, which is where he should have fucking been, uh, before he ends up in prison. He's kept in a cell, which would, you know, be like protective custody. Uh, he's definitely not going to be in general population. I mean, they would have tore him to fucking pieces. Right. You know, killing kids and stuff, definitely not going to go over well with the prison pop, you know, population. So the guards didn't fucking like him either. Nobody fucking likes this guy. Uh, He's tried to kill himself, they say, six times, and now he's in a special cell to avoid suicide, and he's under a 24-7 watch. So 
Hopefully the guy that was watching Jeffrey Epstein is uh, not him. watching this motherfucker. <laughs> or maybe he would. I don't know. I think it's worse to be locked in itself for your life than to be executed to me. That'd be fucking rough. I'd rather be killed than to fucking sit in a cell like that. I couldn't do it. The rest of my fucking life. That's just <laughs> fucked up. Joey, this case would start a debate in Australia about guns, and I spoke to Mick about that, and we've been kind of hinting at this, but what became of this because of Martin Bryant? I mean, a huge reform in gun fucking policies in Australia. Right, a big buyback. They yeah. were buying the guns They fucking back. said uh, they were like, they restricted uh, legal ownership and use of self-loading rifles, self-loading shotguns, and they tightened the controls on the legal use of recreational shooters. So the people that are just using them for sport or hunting or something like that, even they had to fucking... Yeah, you, know, you have to belong to a hunting club or you have to have property where yeah, you have to kill like they, vermin they fucking and shit. initiate basically registry kind of like illinois has the void system yeah. sure. right the only state the only right. fucking state but uh That's also like up. you said they did the buyback and fucking i mean they got almost they got over a half a million fucking firearms back but still, like, that's probably not fucking shit, you know what I'm saying, compared to what there was. But right. they did fucking, I, I think they, what did they get, $350 million funded? Something like that, That's yeah. fucking crazy. It is. But it was because it was all considered a, uh, uh, basically, a, an emergency situation. And they started going through this, like, quickly after the oh, shoot. It, like, within two weeks, they started fucking going through all this shit. Yeah, people were really taking advantage of it, you know. Uh, you also can't display them in your house. They no. have to be kept in a locked right. safe. I mean, it's pretty serious. So it's a much different situation. And, of course, this would be their worst mass shooting, which is when this kind of stuff typically happens. People are very passionate about it. Martin would say one of the main reasons he did it was to become famous, um, plus revenge, revenge for how people had treated him. Also, as we pointed out, that couple at the at the seaside, you know, they bought the property, dissed his dad. So a lot of fucking senseless death caused by this fucking idiot. But it's unbelievably terrible how many lives were were impacted by this. So many, not just the people that were there, but their family, their extended family, just all over, dude. Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot of people that you know are very, very staunch. You know, first, like here, you know, with the uh, gun argument comes up here in the United States and people go fucking crazy. And I'm sure it was similar to that there, but not quite maybe to that degree. But, you know, people that, you know, are staunch like libertarians that don't trust the government at all. They definitely don't want the fucking government telling them they can't own guns. Right. You know, and that's how Ruby Ridge started. Yeah. Kind of how the David, David Koresh, Koresh kind of shit thing, went yeah. down. So it's a very interesting argument. We're certainly not going to get into politics here, but that is a legitimate argument uh, for owning guns. But I can also see where people don't want, you know, uh, individuals to own like semi automatic weapons right, that can. can go in and cause this kind of carnage within a few minutes. You know, that's that's fucked up. I did see an interview with his mom on 60 Minutes. She said that she regrets urging Martin to plead guilty because she has doubts he was even there. <laughs> but she's not alone. I mean, there's a legitimate, right. like, I don't know how big of a group of people that are in the under the belief that he wasn't even there did, and didn't even do this. That's fucking nuts. That the government set it up. It's one of these conspiracy theories. Um, you know, we saw that with Sandy Hook. We saw it with 9-11. You know, you get people that latch onto these conspiracy theories. Mick was saying that some politician years before this incident, when the gun control debate was going on in Australia, he made some sort of comment kind of off the cuff that said there will have to be a massacre at Port Arthur before yeah, that he happens. He said that in the interview, right? clip right there yeah yeah and there you go uh you know maybe that's what gave him the idea who knows right i mean yeah. martin bryant Talking about that fucking fucked up the the 60 minutes interview i was watching that too and the fucking narrator he said i'll quote what he says 
He said, uh, what made a seemingly ordinary, if dim-witted young man, go out and kill 35 people, and have we learned anything from that dreadful day? And it's like, motherfucker, you haven't learned a thing because you're going to call him dim-witted right there on fucking <laughs> right. national TV? Like, right. That's the kind of shit that the motherfucker's like, oh, you think I'm dumb? Right. Watch what I can do. Right. So it was funny. It was just like almost fucking an oxymoron, you know, with the right. statement. Yeah, that's a good point, Joey. Um. So, you know, you're going to get the conspiracy theories with this one for sure if you do any digging into this stuff. Chris, Joey, anything to add to the Port Arthur massacre? I thought it was funny that one of the investigators or whatever, like when he was a kid, he lived like right around the corner from him, didn't even, like he used to sell rabbits to the neighborhoods and shit. And the, the investigator went to his house like, do we know this kid? And she's like, yeah, he used to sell us fucking rabbits when he was a kid. Oh, wow. Fucking, then... So, yeah, when he was younger, they lived around the corner from each other. So that's kind of wow. crazy. That is crazy. Uh, Anything, Joey? <laughs> yeah, I got some. So whenever I fucking, I don't know why it didn't dawn on me. It literally dawned on me today. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, Rick Ring, our fucking faithful listener. I was like, he's from Hobart, Tasmania. Hell yeah. I was like, and he's around my age. I was like, so he was definitely fucking alive for this. So right. I fucking sent him a message. I was like, hey, man, I was like, any chance you like might have any kind of story about a witness or, you know, God forbid, a fucking victim or anything like yeah. that. I was just curious. I was like, if you don't want to say nothing, that's fine, too. Sure, sure. Uh, and then whenever I sent him this, of course, with the time change, I was like, oh, man, he'll probably be fucking sleeping and might not ever even see right. it. But he fucking did, and he fucking answered oh, fuck me. Yeah. So here's a little conversation I had with Rick Ring from my oh, cool. cape, and, and he lives in in uh, Hobart, Tasmania, like I said. And he was telling me, he said, uh, my ex was there when he did that. She was stuffing people's guts back in them, seeing friends with gunshot wounds in the head. She was the manager of the spot he had lunch at, and he came back sh in shooting the people. He was selective of who he shot. Uh, he made sure he shot one person at each table so that the other person there would have to go and live on without them, knowing they were gone. Oh, my Damn. God. Uh, then proceeded to pick them wow. off. He said, my ex ran back with him shooting after her. Uh, she's told me the story a few times. He was a weird dude. We used to talk to him whenever uh, I was working. And I was like, that, and I'm like, holy shit, bro. You fucking met this dude before? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, he fucking had met him there. He said his wife, his ex, that's <clears throat> why his ex, she was given a medal of bravery for all that she had did whenever it had happened. Wow. Um, and whenever I was like, dude, you fucking talk to him. He was like, yeah, we fucking talked to him. Uh, he was shy, fucking weird. And he used to watch us work from his window. He said now in hindsight, it seems fucking super weird. Wow. You know, oh, knowing shit, what he dude. did because it was only like a couple years before the massacre. Oh, wow. Um, he said he's got another friend that he works with whose wife also worked over there. And uh, she had had his car fucking to go to work that day or whatever. But the car ended up with two bullet holes in it from the shooting oh my god and so he still has that car to this day oh wow and i was like yeah i'd probably keep that yeah, for yeah, too, right. you know? but yeah he said uh rick he said his ex was a major witness in the court and that he got to read all the court documents and all that shit it's fucking oh nuts, wow though. fuck yeah well that's cool that rick reached out and got yeah back I, to you. That's awesome. I mean it's fucked up like you know, he was saying the way he did it was like, you know, take out the woman and two kids and then leave the dad. So then the dad yeah, has to suffer later on. That is fucked. And it was man. just like a mental fucking torment that he was also given to basically more victims wow. than what the kill count was. So that's anyway, yeah, up. Rick Ring, thank you for fucking sharing yeah, that. That's very cool. I did my research by watching a couple good YouTube documentaries. I mentioned that 60 Minutes from Australia. That was good. Uh, there was a Monsters one on Martin Bryant that was good. Uh, I read a few articles. Uh, also, of course, talked with Mick, who offered some very interesting insight. So uh, there is quite a bit out there, as you guys have been talking about. So, I mean, if you're interested in Martin Bryant, go Google it. Go on YouTube. There's a lot of stuff if you're interested. But as always, you want to make sure you look at different sources because you don't want to look at, you know, one of these really off the wall conspiracy videos yeah. and assume that's the gospel. Right. Go and check it out and uh, make your own mind up, you know. 
Now, next week, guys, we're going to be doing a feature on Robert Durst. This is a crazy one. The billionaire turned serial killer that seemed to slip through the cracks so many times. A classic case of how people with fucking money can get off on crimes because then it can afford these fucking great lawyers that get him out of shit. Um, his infamous interview on that documentary, The Jinx, was where he had a hot mic on and he said, I killed them all uh, when he was in the bathroom. Uh, definitely interesting. So he died recently and he's been on the list for a while. So I need to that's make sure be I fucking, week. I need to look up the right Durst. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Not Fred, Robert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they're related. I never, I never looked crazy. at that. That'd be crazy. Joey, you got any good page a day for us? I got some page a day. The oh, song. Yeah? All right. So uh, page a day, they're fucking talking about some fucking fingerprint mutilation. Okay. All right. So as long as fingerprints have been used in forensic evidence, of course, criminals have been making attempts to try to alter their fucking, their prints. Uh, varying degrees of success. Um, some turn to underground surgeons like Wilhelm Lesser, who in 1934 agreed to alter mobster John Dillinger's fingerprints and provide him with plastic surgery for $5,000. He cut away the outer layer of Dillinger's skin and treated his fingertips with hydrochloric acid before scraping away the remaining ridges. Now, it was only partially successful. The outer ridges were intact, but the middle part did fucking disappear. Uh, he was successful enough that fucking, um, you know, that it fucking worked out for him a couple of times, but still right. it wasn't exactly like fucking wiping away the fingerprints. Right. Uh, there was, uh, another gangster named creepy Carpus, and he had a mob doctor named Joseph Moran and he had him remove his prints and he was successful enough that Carpus he had trouble even getting a Canadian passport to get over the fucking border because of the faintness of his ridges. Do you remember no when shit. creepy Carpus came up here recently? No. What was that? He taught Charles Manson how to play guitar. That's right. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good time. Yeah, the Manson guitar teacher. <laughs> Uh, in a 1935 article in Journal of Criminal Law and Criminology, they recommend you got to remove at least one millimeter of skin to ensure the ridges don't regenerate. One millimeter. That's a lot of skin. It wow. is a lot yeah. of skin. Uh, so a couple modern-day fingerprint mutilators. So the first one is in 2009. Massachusetts police record from 2009 showed that 20 people were arrested with altered prints on their fingers. Really? It's like quite a bit, you know what I'm yeah, saying? I, I would think. I would think so, too. Uh, in 2010, Dr. Jose Elias Zyder Powell was convicted on conspiracy charges for altering the prints of undocumented immigrants for $4,500. Huh. Wow. Uh, in 2015, a Florida man unsuccessfully attempted to chew off his prints in the back of a police car. <laughs> he just gnawed on his fucking oh fingers God. like fuck that. <laughs> but in 2007, a man Damn. arrested for car theft, he successfully bit off his fingertips while he was in custody. Oh my so God, fucking, dude. Wow. That dude did get him. Jesus. And then the last one they're talking about is in 1995, Jose Izquierdo. He was arrested on drug charges under the alias Alexander Guzman. And he made Z-shaped incisions into his fingers, lifted and swapped the two flaps and stitched them back together. The fuck? <laughs> damn. <laughs> wow. That's fucking crazy. That is crazy. Oh, God damn. That's fucked up. All right. So uh, this one they're talking about is uh, this is a cracked cold case. So, August 19th, 1971, there's a heavily decomposed body of a young woman that's found in a wooded area near the California and Oregon border. Uh, her body's partially covered with debris, and she has a decomposed map of the Northern California camping facility in her back pocket. It's believed she was murdered, but there was no clues to her identity or the identity of a possible killer. So, she was known as Jane Doe, Josephine County, 71940, until 2004, when forensic artist Joyce Nagy, she completed a clay facial reconstruction, and she named her Annie Doe. Oh. Now... 
This proved prophetic because on March 12, 2019, Annie Doe was identified as 16-year-old Anne Marie Lehman, who her family called Annie. So that's no fucking shit. pretty wow. trippy. Yeah, that is weird. But uh, they used her DNA in the fucking uh, DNA Doe project and finally found um, a sister that was in Washington State where uh, Lehman was born and raised, and she provided a DNA sample, and then they fucking ended up solving that one. So crack that. Uh, it's one of the oldest fucking cold cases to be solved at almost 50 years cold. Damn. Wow. That's fucking awesome. That's cool. DNA, man. It'll Hell get yeah, you. I got man. two more from Paige a day, and I'm actually going to do them in the opposite order. I'm going to do – this one's today is actually – uh, because it's about the March of Ides, so that fucking makes oh, yeah. sense. Oh, yeah. It is the March of Ides right Ides now. Ides of March? Yeah, Ides of March, yeah. <laughs> so uh, The March of Ides. Yeah, <laughs> March of Dimes. <laughs> um, so before the Julian calendar, the most influential reform made by Julius Caesar during his Roman reign, Romans referred only to three fixed points of the month, the knowns, the Ides, and the Kalends. So the Ides, the 13th for most months, but the 15th in March, May, July, and October, they were associated with the Roman god Jupiter, and each month on the Ides, the high priest would lead the Ied sheep down the main road to the citadel where it would be sacrificed. Um, the bloody history of the Ides of March is best known for the assassination of Julius Caesar, of right. course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with 60 conspirators hoping to dispose of the dictator and restore Roman Republic. Of course, that plan fucking backfired because the Eid sacrifice plunged Rome into 20 years of civil war that ended up with Caesar's fucking grandnephew Augustus being declared Roman emperor anyway. Right. So that was the Ides of March, which that was today. Interesting. Okay. And then I got one more, and then I'd save this one for last also because it's fucking Australian and we're talking Australian. <laughs> Beautiful. Today. So they're talking about a couple places in Australia and a couple of the fines that you can get there. It's pretty fucking crazy. So if you're in New South Wales, drivers can be fined 2200 Australian dollars or 1500 US dollars for not taking enough care to avoid splashing mud on public bus passengers. Wow. So if you drive by a splash with the motherfuckers, you can get popped. God damn. <laughs> wow. Now, Victoria over there in fucking Australia, they got a few things that are pretty crazy. It's illegal to fly a kite to the annoyance of any person in public. The what? fine is seven hundred seventy-seven Australian or five hundred fifty U.S. dollars. Holy flying shit! A, so somebody just complains somebody off. Yeah. that you're flying a kite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what the uh, fuck? Singing an obscene song in public can attract a fifteen hundred dollar Australian or eleven hundred dollar U.S. Two months imprisonment with increased fines and sentence time for repeat offenders. So don't be walking around rapping and shit. Oh, you wow. get fucking popped in Victoria. Singing any gormong. Or yeah, what? and it's a good thing if you do death metal because you're growling. So yeah, they can't, they can't understand, understand. <laughs> uh, In Victoria, it's also illegal to correspond or do business with pirates. The maximum, what? The maximum penalty is 10 wow. years in prison. Oh, so shit. don't fucking deal with pirates no if you go pirates. to fucking Victoria, Damn. Australia. No ale storm. Huh? Right. No ale Storm, right? And then the, the last one they're talking about, and I fucking agree with this. I don't give a fuck because I live in an apartment, but I agree with this one. It is illegal to make noise with a vacuum cleaner between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. on weekdays oh, and, shit. and 10 p.m. and 9 a.m. on weekends. Oh, wow. Police can direct you to stop making the noise for 72 hours. A breach of their order carries a fine of up to 18600 Australian dollars or 13000 U.S. Jesus Damn. Christ. Wow. With an extra fine up to 5000 Australian dollars per day for continuing noise violations. Holy shit. So be careful if you ever go to Victoria. I yeah. guess. Don't Go I vacuum guess. in the middle yeah. of the night. I'll Fuck. ask Sean about this down there in Melbourne. Yeah. That's where he's at, man. Yeah. That's crazy. So there we go. Page All right, a day. Page a day, man. Gotta love it. All right, guys. Well, I think we have done our fair share of murder tonight. So I think I hear some metal. I think it's about time to do something, Joey. What the fuck do we need to do? Let's get our metal on. Just because CK has passed on, he's not done educating the masses. CK will forever be the great metal motherfucker. We're here to stomp poser ass and eradicate the planet of their kind. CK has passed the torch to us, and we will forge the fuck on. In CK's name, we will bestow metal knowledge upon all of you. Metal. All right, yeah, this segment will always be dedicated to the great metal motherfucker. So, CK, 
Long Chris, CK. I am passing you the horns. Pass them horns. Pass the so horns. you got the horns tonight. We are recording. We're going to try it again. Uh, we had some <laughs> issues last week with this. We're going to try it again. We're going to record the metal segment here for our YouTube channel. So, yeah, hi. Hell yeah. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, Chris, and you got the horns, which means you picked the topic for the metal segment tonight. So yeah, so what you I, got? I decided to do Ailstorm because they like to do something I like to do that I'm not doing this month, as Joey mentioned. They like to drink. But uh, so like uh, Ailstorm, Hail, Ailstorm, not Hailstorm, fucking Scottish band that formed in Perth in fucking 2004 as originally named Battleheart. And uh I mean, they were put together by a dude named Christopher Biles and Gavin Harper just as a studio project. And they recorded some like demos or whatever. And they sent them into uh, Napalm Records and Napalm Records like picked them up pretty much immediately. And uh, that was in 2007. And then they had a song called fucking Heavy Metal Pirates that just like kind of blew up. So that's that's when they changed their name to Ailstorm and they kind of took on the moniker of pirate metal like as the big success they had with that song, they just like went with the whole pirate theme. Like, fuck That's it, this cool. is this is just gonna be us now. They better not play in Victoria, <laughs> right? right? Yeah, don't, yeah. Be, don't be fucking around with pirates in Victoria. Yeah, dude. stay away from Melbourne. Man, I mean, they got to be good with the fucking Pastafarians, though, right? <laughs> you would think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so then, uh, so like I said, they got signed in two thousand seven, and then. Uh, 2008, they put out their fucking debut album, which is Captain Morgan's Revenge. And I've drank a lot of Captain Morgan where it had its revenge the next day. And that's not fun, dude. <laughs> Woo, that sucks, dude. But fucking... Make it, it happen. It, it'll, that captain will get you, dude. Fuck. But uh, they got had some pretty badass songs. Like ta- so, Some of their song titles are great. Like they got fucking song called Witches in Mead or Wenches in Mead. Fucking... Just like pirate shit. Let's go fucking raid a fucking tavern and fucking winch. Get me a fucking ale or whatever, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and then uh, in 2009, they put out uh, Black Sails at Midnight. Fucking goddamn fuck. The famous Old Spice is a great song about rum. Because like I said, they fucking love to drink. Fucking just a lot of their songs are just about pirate shit. Pillaging, fucking sailing the seas, fucking good shit. And then in... Uh, 2011 they put out fucking uh back through time which has one of the best song titles ever they got a song called midget saw on that fucking album the only thing i can imagine imagine is like it's like a big chop saw but it's a regular chop saw because you're cutting midgets not big people oh wow (laughs) but i don't know dude but fucking then uh 2014 they put out sunset on the golden age which has fucking great songs fucking mead from hell and one of my favorite songs, Drink, dude. I love the song, Drink. That's all they want to do. Just drink. Dude, just drink. And they got a song called Hangover that goes along with that of album. Course. So Drink, Hangover, fucking fun times. And they put out fucking 2017, uh, No Grave But The Sea, which had fucking Fucked With An Anchor, which is another great song. <laughs> Fuck you with the fucking anchor. It's fucking good shit, dude. I love it, dude. The fucking Rage of the Pentahooks. All I can imagine is like pirate hooks and a pentagram. Is that That's what I'm going with, Rage of the Pentahooks. So seems like a fun time. Fucking just blood yeah. dripping off and shit. Fucking. And then uh, Curse of the Crystal Coconut came out in 2020. Fucking awesome songs. Fucking Zombies Ate My Pirate. Like, all right, cool. Fucking <laughs> zombies first as pirates. The fucking zombie ate it. Fucking hell yeah. And the fucking the metal, the pirate metal drinking crew, which is a fucking fun ass suck. Yeah, fucking that's song. the one I think the song. Yeah, that I dude, picked, fucking yeah. good shit, man. I love it. And then uh, just this year in January, they put out Seventh Rum of a Seventh Rum. And fucking. <laughs> nice. Uh, fucking good fucking ass fucking album title right there. And all their fucking artwork is fucking awesome shit. It's like fucking. It, think of. Uh, what's the fucking. What the. One guy's name in fucking that Johnny Depp pirate movie, fuck, with the fucking octopus face. Kind of like yeah. a lot of them were kind of like that and shit, dude. But man, fucking uh, one of the fucking song titles. I haven't heard a lot of the new one really so far, but uh, like piss wank tits. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> like, that's a great song title. Yeah, dude, I mean, with fuck. everything so serious and metal, it's kind of yeah, fun. Yeah, like, that's dude, why that's I used to like to listen to the mentors now and then. Just. Goofy shit, you know. Yeah, they, they had God a did. different couple different lineup changes throughout, but right now the current lineup is Christopher Bowles, who originated the band on fucking uh, lead vocals and guitar. So he's got the guitar going. Gotta nice, love it. like first Jason. Yep. Uh, Gareth Murdoch on bass and backing vocals. Peter Alcorn on drums. Uh, 
Matei Boder on guitar and backing vocals, and then uh, Elliot Vernon on keyboards, and he does like uh, the not clean vocals, the growly vocals, and the screams and shit. So they're fucking just a fun ass fucking band to listen to. If you That's fucking cool. out there just want some drinking music, party music, throw on some fucking ale storm and drink oh, yeah. up and have a good fucking time, man. Very cool. All right. That's awesome. Uh, I got a lost classic for us tonight, guys. I know we've let, talked let about this CD quick. before. Let me ask a couple of things about Alestorm. Oh, yeah, go ahead. A, with Alestorm, is that the band that did the 99 bottles of beer that we listened to? I don't think so, no. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, like we, fucking... We listened to the whole thing. The whole thing, it was like forever. No, that's not that band. I can't remember. And then, what was the other thing I was going to fucking say about them? Oh, that, the fact that you just did ale storm and you're not even drinking. Yeah. Are you fucking, have you been overcome by pol- poser guys? <laughs> Three no, weeks, sir, no, no sir. drinking, man. Holy shit. Nope. Not overcome by poser guys. Shit. I went to the gym last night too. Fuck. Oh, yeah. yeah I damn. saw something about that. Courtney had been to the gym and I thought, wow, that's hell. Yeah, dude. That's, that's cool, dude. Good for you. <laughs> All right, well, the Lost Classic this week, guys, it went with Megadeth, So Far, So Good, So What. So good. I've been listening to some Megadeth lately, doing that, uh, or reading that book about John Zazula from Megaforce Records and talking about Metallica, Megadeth, Exodus, all that early stuff, and just kind of makes you reminisce a little bit. And so that album is always one that I liked. I know CK said he didn't like it. I love but it. But then he went back and listened to it again and yeah, kind of yeah. re you know, reacclimated and changed his mind and said he was he was all for it too. So that's cool. All right. What uh what have we been listening to, Chris, other than Alestorm here lately? <laughs> what you been listening to? Uh I came across this band called Inherent Death. I think they're from Texas. I don't know how I did. That's cool. But it's a fucking death metal band. I listened to a little bit of them. They're on Spotify. I don't know how I came across it, but they, they were fucking jamming pretty hard, dude. I checked them out. I can't remember the name of the album offhand, but Inherent Death, they were pretty badass. That's cool. Fucking, uh, this one, hold on, what was that fucking called? I came across this other, <laughs> motherfuck, where was it? Capitor, it's K-A-P-I-T-U-R. I only found one song or video or whatever, but it's like, it's a cover of Sepultura's Roots Buddy Roots, but this chick's playing the cello on it. And she does the vocals, and it's a chick, but her vocals are awesome. It's a badass wow. cover of Roots oh. Buddy Roots. I don't know. I just come across random shit like that and fucking check it out. Fucking That's cool. Lately. But yeah, All just right. good shit. Joey, what about you, man? Uh, <clears throat> what have I been listening to? I've been listening to that post human abomination. Yeah. Which that's uh what we were talking about fucking earlier and we couldn't fucking think of the name. That but shit's fucking, fucking brutal. Coming man. out of comatose and fucking uh we're gonna do a review on that An album. Italian band. Yeah, fucking awesome. Nasty. Um I was also listening to Gape because fucking, you know, doing the Port Arthur Massacre, right. I had a fucking jam. Of course. Band. I was listening to Blood Duster because I kept it fucking down. Hell on yeah, me. man. Blood uh, Duster. Uh another thing that I found that was fucking new um was a band called Chemicide. And the album's called Common Sense, and it's brand new. It just came out fucking 2022, but they're from Costa Rica, fucking thrash metal. So fucking good. It's just nonstop riff after riff. So nice. go check that out, Chemicide. Yeah, yeah I dude. think I saw you post something about that. Yep. That's cool. I've been listening to that Flayed Disciple, uh, that UK death metal band, A, a Hell in Living Flesh. Is that, the EP. I checked that out. It's fucking, I like to do it. Right, it man. It's so nasty. Uh, schizophrenia recollections of the insane i still been jamming that and then i stumbled on a band that i actually saw i think it was on a flayed disciple flyer uh the band was called bonded by blood um they had a couple different singers but the latest singer i really like and oh, they the band crushed bonded it. by blood yeah, yeah. They're, they're decent the album was called the aftermath very very cool thrash stuff it's definitely you know they admit they named themselves after the song and album by exodus oh, yeah. gary holt was interviewed about it he said he thought it was cool oh, as hell yeah, thank you it's an he honor. was honored that <laughs> yeah, a band yeah. would want to name themselves that so i think that's cool uh so yeah so i've been jamming that stuff and just listening to a lot of metal lately just good shit uh thanks to steve from comatose music for sending imperative uh, pr our way 
they were the ones that sent the press release for Flayed Disciple and the one that Joey, that you mentioned, they sent that as well. Um, I posted my review of the Flayed Disciple EP on our Facebook page. So, uh, yeah, if you want to, you know, check out our reviews, Joey's going to do one on that post-human abomination. Oh, yeah. Um, and I did one on the Flayed Disciple shit. I mean, hey, we just weigh in and say what we think about the albums. If we like them, we'll review them. So bands... If you want to send us your stuff to check out, get a hold of us. You can contact me at Pete at MurderMetalMayhem.com. Uh, there's no guarantee we're going to play it, but we'll check it out. And, you know, we'd love to have more bands contact us to play your music, to do interviews or right, review. Yeah. Get people um, noticed a little more. Yeah, all the above. So we've always said, I mean, Chris and I from the beginning, hey, you know, we'd love to support the underground band, so any band, uh, doesn't have to be bands that people know about. I mean, we prefer the underground stuff, personally. Um, you can send it the old school way, if you want to, to Murder Metal Mayhem, P.O. Box 554, Hayworth, Illinois, 61745. And if you want to throw some stickers and other swag in there, that's always cool. We'll put it out on the table. We need some more stickers for our table. We do. We, we always need we more stickers. stickers. So bands send us stickers. It's like a Taylor Swift stickers. song in here. <laughs> and send us some Pop-Tarts, okay? Yeah. We eat Pop-Tarts when we're in metal. That's why you see the Pop-Tarts and stuff out here. So, All right, with so much new music coming out, I mean, the pandemic, that's the one good thing about it is a lot of bands hit the studio you got new uh, destruction, decapitated, evil invaders, fucking creator. There's so much new stuff coming out. So we always keep our ears open for new releases and try to pass that along to you guys. Now, Joey, you got the horns next week. Uh, what's your plan for uh, the band you're going to do next week? My plan is not to give out any information right now. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to let it be known because I'm pretty sure I know what it is. Uh, I'm trying to fucking correspond with a fucking um, interview that I'm doing. Right. So I'm going to leave it at that. But okay. regardless, you'll get a good band from It's going to be week. brutal. Yeah. I mean, obviously. Yeah, one way or another. Yeah, that's cool. And also, speaking of Brutal, we're going to have Bones on Josh from the death metal band Murder <laughs> Complex in here. Uh, they have, uh, you know, we're going to be doing our April Fool's episode on the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Dude, you know what's oh, yeah. fucked up about that? We were talking about that last weekend, and for some reason it was stuck in my head that we were doing that this week. So I did like three days of research. Oh, on no. And then I'm like, wait a minute. This ain't even what the fuck we're doing, dude. And I was going to tell you guys, you need to bring your own colander. Oh, oh yeah, you. dude. Okay, yeah. so make sure you I'll wear bring a spaghetti, colander. bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, so that'll be fun, and they're going to be in here with us. That's the week of April 5th uh, to do that. So they're going to be playing. We're going to be playing some new music from them. Uh, they actually released the album early. They he did. said, fuck it, and just released it. It was supposed to come out April 1st, but he released it already. So New Murder Complex, you can get those guys on Facebook, and uh, I'm not sure where else that... I think it's available on, like... Uh, it's through DistroKid and all that, so probably, like, Apple. And you can probably yeah, I think you could stream it if you yeah. want to. Um, but, yeah, buy the physical copies yeah. from those guys. That's always good. All right, the 666 Club. We've talked about it. It's our Patreon supporters. You go to patreon.com slash Murder Metal Mayhem, and you could join up. Get them perks. You get that Manson I don't family episode. All these interviews, <laughs> Joey, we talk about yeah. available to them. Yep. I mean, when I say you get them right away, you guys know. I mean, I'm finished with the interview, and like 15 minutes later, you're getting it. Right. I get so them. I'm doing them like you get right them the same now. time me and Joey get them. So yeah. Right. So, I mean, you're getting this shit right away. All unedited, full of interviews. You're getting all of it. So even just that, but you get the episodes early, 10% off merch. And I can't wait to roll out this new website. I got the web guy gearing up. I've got them all the logos and getting all the stuff I want. The store. And so after April 1st, he's going to start working on it. So once that new web store comes out, I'm going to have it set up where you can um, use your 666 Club discount so you can get right your merch online. with yeah, a little yeah. bit of a discount on it. So that's okay. cool. 
All right. Well, we have done plenty of metal tonight. Yes. So, Chris, what the fuck do we need to do? Let's get our mayhem on. Fuck I... yeah. Mayhem. God damn it. We are the pirate metal drinking crew. We think you're done and we hate you too. We are the pirate metal drinking crew. We don't give a fuck. We think you all suck. We are the pirate metal drinking crew. We think you're dumb and we hate you too. We are the pirate metal drinking crew. We don't give a fuck. We think you all suck. Fuck you! Ladies, looking to spice things up a bit? Give us a call at Ramirez Escort Service, where no hole is sacred. Our escorts might have rotten teeth, but don't let that scare you away. Enjoy a Latino love connection at night. It's almost springtime, and that means love is in the air. Let one of our escorts tear your eyes out while you say you love Satan! Richard Ramirez Escort Service will brand your ass with a pentagram so you can show off that tramp stamp with pride. Call 888-I-LOVE-SATAN today and mention Murder Metal Mayhem and get 10% off a night with a degenerate, stinky, drug-addicted lover tonight who needs Netflix and chill when you can have pentagram and kill. Come on, ladies. You know you want it. Richard Ramirez Escort Service. Wow. <laughs> Very sensual I there, all Chris. About that shit. <laughs> I know. We do so many of those. It is funny when we haven't heard it in a while. Richard Ramirez Escort Service commercial. Thank you, Chris. And before that, Alestorm and the song Pirate Metal Drinking Crew, Fuck good yeah. stuff. Yeah, just cool drinking music, just having some fun. Nothing wrong with that. Like Arr. dance to it. <laughs> Does anybody have any uh, mayhem to share tonight? I do not. I got, I got a couple of pieces of mayhem. All right, Shit, go ahead. Yeah. One of them, both of them are pretty quick. The first one, I've done this before, but today was another day. Now, at my apartment, I don't fucking get people that fucking knock on my door or ring right. my buzzer. Randomly like, fucking. Right. I, I know somebody's coming over because I fucking talk to them and text them. Now, today, I'm fucking at home because I didn't have to work today, and my landlady... She's in the apartment upstairs because the people that had lived up there had fucked up the apartment and fucking dipped out. So they were up there fixing it and shit. So I'm sitting there on my couch getting ready for the episode tonight. And all of a sudden I hear a fucking knock on my door. Like, what the fuck is this? And I'm like, okay, well, it's probably my landlady. You know what I'm saying? Fucking so. Right. I open the door and the motherfucker's sitting there with a goddamn clipboard. And I know what these motherfuckers do. They walk around trying to get you to show them your fucking Apartment electric shit, bill. Yeah. And you know, oh, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, you know, I know what you're talking about. Fucking jag-offs. I fucking hate them dudes. And they're yeah. the only ones that ever ring my shit, so I fucking get frustrated. So I just fucking look at dude, and I'm like, bro, I'm like, you know I do the same thing as you do. I work with you, right? I was like, I work. <laughs> get the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, I was like, I work for the same company. Why do they got my name on the list? And he was like, oh, who do you work for? I was like, bro, don't worry. I, I'm a scammer, too. That's what I told him. I was like, I scam, too, bro. And I just closed the door. Oh, but, wow. dude, I fucking hate those motherfuckers. So, yeah, I always try to fucking. Like, try if you can bring your electric yeah. bill down I'm like, or dude, whatever. I do the same thing. What the fuck? Anyway, so that's one thing. That's funny right? as fuck. Now, here's something else. This is kind of something that just kind of tripped me out. Do you guys remember whenever you're growing up and, like, yeah. you know, especially, like, when we grew up and fucking being boys and shit, like, teasing motherfuckers. Right. You remember whenever you would fucking talk shit about, like, adult diapers and there were jokes about them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. What are What am I talking about? Depends. Yeah, it depends. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> there's wow. no s on depends no it's just a depends. my whole life <laughs> i've said that's depends and every joke i've ever it's heard always had the s on it depends uh, but it's just depend. and i saw somebody fucking post something about that that i had to look it up and it's just called depend wow that's fucking okay. crazy. Yeah, it's always been depends, every joke man. i've ever seen it's depends yeah it's like that joke what's all lady crap smell like it depends exactly <laughs> so anyway i thought that was some crazy shit i share that with yeah. our listeners it's, it's fucking funny. depend it's not depends. It's depend okay. so every time you hear the joke know that that's some that's right. like saying kool-aid with a jim jones story <laughs> right. that's right that, nice analogy joey very nice analogy <laughs> that's good stuff yeah all right, well, we have a good killer cage match tonight, and we're recording 
this segment. We thought we recorded the metal segment, but the, <laughs> the record up. button wasn't pushed. I don't Shit know what happens. happened there. So we're going to try it again here in Mayhem. Eh, and go fuck yourself. <laughs> right? I did, you ain't recording shit. Killer <laughs> Cage match tonight. Uh, we have our uh, you know listeners pick. We got 75 killers we came up with, 75 objects for them to fight with. And Chris, our listeners, go on our Facebook page yes, and we, we got get them to come up with some random numbers. Yeah, our numbers this week, once again, fucking trash dick gummo wall bacon. Fucking Ray McFalls and Nicole Graves Anderson. So thank you all again for fucking participating and giving us these numbers. Fuck Hell yeah. yeah. We got a good one tonight, though. Fighting to death in a cage. Joey, a very interesting. Yeah, the fucking uneven matchup. The little old man that likes to grave rob and shoot bartenders. Fucking Ed Gein, he'll tie you up. And then fucking Ted Bundy, he'll fucking tie you up too, along with three other bitches, and fucking rape you while he's laughing at all of you. Beat you dead. with a stick, yep, man. Whatever so he's got to do. Midwest Ed Gein versus fucking West Coast Ted Bundy. That's right. Yeah. And so we got uh, those two in a cage, Chris, with a couple of objects. Yeah, they got themselves a pet rock and a gun that shoots boiling pus. Right. So that would be the festering wounds from our the story. The festering wounds from the murder segment are supplying <laughs> the supplying pus for the, the gun. Supplying the ammunition here. for the gun. <laughs> boiling pus. <laughs> you know what I mean? That is fucking nasty. <laughs> and the variable is a transgender prostitute after drinking a 12-pack of Mickey's. That's fucked. <laughs> so, that'll be interesting. So, Chris, what do you think We're here? Canceled. We got canceled. Oh, Ed we're, Gein. we're canceled. <laughs> Ed Gein and Ted Bundy fighting oh. to death in a cage with a pet rock and a gun that shoots boiling pus with a transgender prostitute on 12 pack of Mickey's. So, like, Ed Gein's going to see fucking goddamn Bundy's victim laying there and fucking just take the skin off of Bundy's victim. Now, Gein's fucking dressed as a corpse, which turns Bundy on because it's an animated corpse. He's like, oh, oh wow. shit, dude. Live action death. So, fucking, <laughs> so like, they're kind of fucking, fucking Bundy's over there fucking trying to rape Ed Gein. Ed Gein ain't about it. So he grabs his pet rock, his trusty pet rock, because he's lonely. Of course he's got a fucking pet rock. Okay. Fucking, he just fucking starts smacking fucking Bundy over the fucking head with it. And fucking Bundy grabs the fucking boiling pus and fucking shoots fucking Ge uh, Gein in the face with the pus so it's dripping off his face. <laughs> and since Bundy likes to sleep with dead people, there's always pus. So he's even turned on more licking the pus off of Gein's oh, face. God. Meanwhile, the fucking goddamn transgender prostitutes fucking sipping on them Mickey's fucking <laughs> drunk and fucking Bundy's gonna fucking kill her and give fucking Gein more fucking skin to wear but I think fucking Bundy in the end fucking just takes out Gein cause he's just a weak old man not that Bundy's super strong but I'm gonna give it to Bundy in the end just fucking taking Gein out and then fucking his corpse too okay wow Joey what about you man it's like fucking the rabbit and the hare. <laughs> I think that fucking Bundy's gonna fucking be a, a little fucking you know thinking he's a little bit fucking better off than he is and has a bigger advantage. He's going to underestimate old Eddie Gein. Yeah. yeah. So what Ed Gein's going to do is he's going to fucking slip in and he's all low to the ground because he's a short old man. And he's going to grab that rock, come up and fucking slam it across fucking Ted Bundy's forehead and knock him the fuck out. Then he's going to go over with the rock and fucking bash that transgender prostitute because he has no idea what that is. He, <laughs> he is scared. Ed Gein's yeah. never seen no shit like that. That's, That's a true. monster to him. Right. And definitely something his mom warned him about. That's so right. He mom bashes always that, warned him about and that. And then he takes the fucking body of the fucking uh, transgender prostitute and starts cutting it up and then starts fucking putting it onto Ted Bundy and creating an altar of fucking body parts on Bundy. Oh, shit. oh, wow. And he uses that fucking boiling pus to fucking as glue to fucking get the pieces onto Bundy. Oh, damn. So by the time fucking Bundy comes back too, he's some kind of John Carpenter mutated thing. <laughs> wow, like a glue gun with the pus? Yeah, and oh, fucking man. Eddie Gein just sits there laughing and ends up bashing his face and Gein wins underdog. God oh, damn, drinking the Mickey's after he's done? Oh, you know. I mean, See, I'm wondering <laughs> if... The Mickey's if, are his fucking... His fucking... Uh, his, what, what am I looking for? His fucking goal, like fucking reward? Yeah, his reward, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if Ted Bundy, Bundy is going to get distracted yeah, with that transgender go. prostitute. Because we don't know what she looks like, but, yeah. you know, Bundy might uh, get distracted with that drunk woman slash transgender prostitute 
Like, oh. And I'm wondering if Ed Gein is going to get the upper hand on him because he's going to be distracted. I don't know, but I think whoever gets the gun that shoots boiling pus, it's going to be pretty tough to beat because that That's is gross. fucking nasty. Yeah. Your face being showered in boiling pus, I think you're going to be pretty much over with yeah, at that I point. Yeah, that. So. All right, well, very good. We love a little killer cage match, and thanks again to our listeners who contributed the random numbers for Hell us. Yeah. All right, I got a little update on the Deeper Than Dead book I just finished. I've been working on the manuscript layout for the printer as things are coming together so we can get a test copy. This is the first time I'm doing color all the way through with the artwork inside from Brian Usual. Um, the artwork looks fucking awesome. It too. really turned out good. Eight and a half by 11 in size. So the pieces will be full size uh, pages. I'm waiting on the web designer to give me a solid date when the new website and web store will be ready so that I could set a release date for the book. I want the website and web store up before the book comes out. So that way it's easy to find I me. appreciate you guys being patient, but we're getting really close now. I will be starting the recording of the audiobook here in a couple weeks now that the weather has finally turned decent. I don't need to have the heater running out here. That makes a lot of noise, so I can't do it with that going on. So, uh, a lot than going dead, on with Deeper soon. Than Dead. What's that? Deeper Than Dead coming soon. It is. So, deeperthandead.com. You could go to the Facebook page for now. But once the website's up, we're going to have all sorts of cool uh, excerpts from the chapters. You'll get to see a couple of these art pieces I'm talking about. It's going to be killer. It's going to be something like I've never done before. So I'm pretty excited about seeing it all finished. So been working on this now for, you know, since August. Uh, and so it, when you're immersed in a project like that, that goes on for months, I mean, you just, you're anxious to get it done, but you, you also break, know you man. don't want to rush. Yeah, you you know? got to take a break sometimes. You got to, you know, make sure things are just right. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, also, we've been talking about our YouTube channel. You can sh Hi. subscribe to that. <laughs> right. You're watching <laughs> us are. on YouTube. But uh, if you're listening to this, check that episode description for a link to it. Uh, or you could just go on YouTube and type out Murder Metal Mayhem and you'll find us that way and subscribe so you get all the content notifications when we post them. We've been fucking trying to add more content all the time lately. We so have been, right, yeah. Man. We were slacking. We're trying to get there, though. We're trying to get it to where it needs to be. And that's why we're doing this right now, recording a part of the show, so you guys can kind of see what it looks like when we're doing these segments. So, All right. Well, I think we have done plenty of mayhem tonight. Boom. So let's hit the fucking outro. Mate. God damn it. One time I was masturbating, <laughs> and my dog came up and started licking my balls. And then right as I came, it stuck its tongue up my ass. It's on for all days. Something can fell back. Fuck yeah, Joey. Fuck Who's yeah. that, man? Gabe. Fuck yeah, some from Gabe. Fucking Tasmania. Hell yeah, they're from Tasmania. The song Rim Job Romance. The That's best kind of romance. Fucking special, so... All right, Rick Ring, of course, a singer for Gape, and he's a big supporter of us, so we wanted to throw him some love tonight, and with the Tasmania episode, especially Hobart, I mean, the necessary. same fucking town or city in Tasmania, so that's cool as hell. I so. gave him some good news today, too, whenever I was talking to him, because fucking, I had, I had a package for him a while back, but whenever I went to the post office, they said, Australia is not accepting anything oh, wow. that's not priority or whatever. So it cost me like a hundred dollars to send a small ass package. I was like, "Fuck that, fucking!" Uh, but just now they fucking opened it back up to where U.S. can send there. Oh, good. So good. I told him that he was like, "Oh, fucking thank God!" <laughs> right, right. All right, bumper music tonight: Ailstorm, Gape, and Flayed Disciples. Some brutal Oof. shit tonight. 
Uh, the metal segment music is by who, Chris? Fucking Chrysix, fucking killing it. You know it. And Murder Metal Mayhem's intro, Joey? Low 12. Low 12. And thank you again to Rebecca Boomsock for sponsoring the podcast this month. Did Please trickle. check that episode description for the Facebook page for the Dick Trickle Memorial Project. So that is really cool. And again, thank you, Rebecca, for thank helping you. out. Thanks to everybody out there listening. We keep seeing those numbers rolling in. Uh, we, you know, again, we mentioned this a couple, three weeks ago. We hit a half a million listens. Fuck yeah, man. That's, That's awesome. We Love appreciate it. it very, very much. And we got some good listener comments this week. Chris? Uh, Petra Oler says, I'm a new listener in Germany. I really love the way you guys make true crime funny. There's nothing about <laughs> funny about crime. I wonder if Petra you. knew old Fritz Honko. <laughs> Who knows? But so thank you, Petra. Yeah, thanks, Petra. Appreciate it. I just awesome. cannot, I cannot get used to, we're in the outro section and reading the comments and Chris is just not slurring everything. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Drinking <laughs> so water. Hard, very yeah. scary. <laughs> Joey, what about that next one? Uh, Debbie Jenkins, 3453 said, I love your podcast on the bat school disaster. I've heard others do the podcast on it and yours was so much better. Plus you talked to Harold Schechter, one of my favorite authors. Thank you, Debbie. Oh yeah. yeah. Thanks Debbie. And then we had Angel Eduardo commented, my boyfriend and I love hearing your new episodes in Bayside, New York, when we're at work. We loved your episode on the Station Nightclub Fire. So, yeah, that was a good one. Horrible story, Horrible but it was an man, interesting yeah. topic for sure. And then, Chris, Hold what on. about that last I, one? Let's all do the last one together. And then I'm going to say... One, two, three, four, and we're going to say, you guys kill that shit every fucking week. All right? All right, we're going to do that. You ready? All right, we got to say who it's from, though. Now we got Danny Trinko 4. Says, says one, two, three, four, you, you guys, guys kill, kill that, that shit every, every fucking week. week. Horns! <laughs> Thank you, Danny Trinko. Yeah, Thank you, yeah. Danny Trinko 4. Hell yeah. All right. Check out MurderMetalMayhem.com to listen to all the podcasts, the past episodes. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And subscribe to that fucking YouTube channel. Definitely don't want to miss that. You can hear us pretty much anywhere. So thanks to everybody that does. Support the show. Join that 666 Club. Go to Patreon.com slash MurderMetalMayhem. Again, all this stuff is in the episode description. Three bucks a month is all you need. And you get all this cool back, you know, VIP shit, uh, all the stuff we've been talking about. Uh, you can also order my books at creationofchaos.com pretty soon. It's all going to be on that new web store. But for the time being, you can get them that way. Um, I'm going to say one last thing, too. Yeah. Can, should have said it in metal, but... Uh, as we were talking about last week, uh, Bob Cuff passed away from cancer. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But somebody got Michael Bain, actually, which I'll bring up his name, too, since he's a listener. But he got in contact with me, and somebody was putting out, they he got, like, 10 songs or whatever without vocals on them. We're going to do it for, like, a tribute tri uh, album for fucking Bob Shaw. Oh, cool. But, yeah, I picked one of the songs today. I'm going to do Goremonger vocals over one of them. So, yeah. Shit. Awesome. I just wanted to give a shout-out to fucking, we're going to do a little fucking Yeah, that's tribute cool, that. Michael. Huh? I'll keep people updated as we get closer. That's really cool, dude. That is really cool. All right, well, we can't let him go without hearing a karaoke song. Here's a blast from my past, so crank it up. And until next time, keep one foot in the gutter. And keep shredding shit in the pit, mate. The world, the kingdom's toughest violence, and the violence shall take it by force. Reach out and touch it! If we can't live in peace, then let's die in peace.
Feel it unknown and you're all alone Flesh and bone by the telephone Lift up the receiver, I'll make you a believer Take the best, put me to the test Things on your chest, you need to confess I will deliver, you know I'm a forgiver Reach out and touch me Reach out and touch me Jesus Someone to hear your prayers Someone who cares Your own, your own personal Jesus Someone to hear your prayers Someone who's there Fuck yeah We had better not have any of our children left when it's over, because they'll parachute in here on us. Feel it unknown and you're all alone. Flesh and gold by the telephone. Lift up the receiver, I'll make you a believer. I will deliver, you know I'm a forgiver. Being so bewildered with many, many pressures on my brain, seeing all these people behave so treasonous, it was just too much for me to put together. But uh, uh, I now know what he was telling me, and it'll happen if the plane gets in the air. Even so, my opinion is that we be kind to children and be kind to seniors and take the portion like we used to take in ancient Greece and step over quietly. Because we are not committing suicide to the Revolutionary right. Act. We can't go back. We won't leave us alone. They're now going back to tell more lies, which means more congressmen. And there's no way, no way we can survive. Mother! Mother! Man!